We have seen so much epic Halo 5 this weekend, and it's just getting started. We are down to our final three matches. This is Championship Sunday, and we are heading into our first semifinal with Allegiance, the number one seed facing off against the youngsters from Denial that put on such an incredible show on Saturday. Chris Puckett here at the analyst desk, joined by the national champions. We got Strong Side and Ghost Ayami. Fellas, how pumped are you for this series? Oh, this is honestly the series that I've been waiting for. Denial is the new Young Gun squad, and Allegiance has a few new faces on their oh, side yeah. as well. So this is going to be probably one of the biggest matchups we're going to see here at this event. It's a huge deal for Nated too, right? I mean, this is going to put him into the finals for this tournament and right. giving him that chance that... I mean, he hasn't, he, he's had it a few times, but I always think of back when he was on SV and he had the chance to beat Final Boss and he didn't. And he's got to he's gotta have that in the back of his head always. So hopefully he has an upset victory here today. I would love to see Nated in a finals. It has been way too long. Can he get it done here on a major land? He's got to get through a very tough denial squad. But first, let's introduce you to our top seeded lineup. This is Allegiance. And Nated, he may be the veteran, he may be the loudest guy on this squad, but yesterday, arguably, most impressive guy on the team was L-Town. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we just heard Nated already starting with the hype early before this match right here. L-Town is just on fire, or excuse me, was on fire yesterday, so if he's keeping up that type of gameplay, if Nated's keeping up the hype, leading his team in that, in that fashion, these guys are gonna be a force to be reckoned with. We saw them take down Optic Gaming yesterday, if they're playing like they were yesterday, they have a very good shot at taking down Denial. They're the number one seed, so yep. they're predicted to win. Denial is, is the true underdog story here in this matchup, but uh, here we've got Allegiance, Nated, Suspector, L-Town, and Kratos. Nated, one of the best players who has not won a major LAN tournament yet. And he's been playing since 2005, guys. Oh, yeah. 11 years of Halo that competition little beanie. does not have a LAN championship at a major that, yeah. event. Suspector, L-Town, and Kratos, though, some ridiculous talent that he is yep. alongside, and we will see how these guys play here on Championship Sunday. Now, Nated, I do have to warn, Denial, He's got the serial killer look. He was super focused. Then he just starts cracking up laughing and yelling. Yeah, so you don't and, know what's going to happen. And the best part He's coming for you. Is that if you watch the Nated stream enough, you know that look. That's the I am going to I'm going to wreck you look. And it's it's it is scary. It is the serial killer. I'm coming killer. for your soul. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, deny watch out. I can't wait to see these guys play on the other side of the stage though. Kratos and the boys from Allegiance are going to have their hands full with this man. Contra was doing such a great job in the objectives. And uh, sorry, Devin was doing a great job in the objective play, working with Contra and Elumni. Yep. The coach, I kind of touched on it with Roy. The Elumni was helping this denial squad get so many power weapons yesterday. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big factor of the squad. You even heard it from Hoop when you were interviewing him yesterday. He's like, you know, alumni, I'm just listening to everything he tells me to do. He's telling me to stay alive. I'll stay alive. He's telling me to challenge and, and, and be aggressive. That's what I'm going to do. So he's got that great guidance from a veteran player who's just got the knowledge and he's got a lot of experience behind him uh, to be giving that type of uh, knowledge towards this new up and coming player. It's going to be amazing to see how this whole thing plays out, guys. We got to talk about the keys to victory. We got some fresh ones here today yep. on Championship Sunday. Let's start with Allegiance. How do they get the victory over Denial here, Ghost? I mean, you say to keep Nated hyped, but I don't even know if that's a key to victory today because he's keeping himself hyped. This guy has had his head in the game since the weekend has started. So I, I just think we need to focus on L-Town now. And this guy yesterday proved that he can stay alive. He proved that not only can he do that, but he can dominate as well. And and I haven't seen that out of him. So for him to, to come in and step into that role in a major tournament, I mean, hats off to him. Uh, and, and last but not least, you want to stay sneaky. These guys, we know they have a, a very different uh, dynamic of play styles, right? Where they, they're very aggressive at times, but then when they get that control, they'll stay sneaky. They're, they're waiting around a, quarter with the scatter, a corner with a scatter shot um, or, or with a, an SMG or some, right. so on and so forth. And yeah, they're, they're good, man. It, I feel like these two play styles match up pretty darn well. Strong side, would you say that's fair? Yeah, definitely. I mean, individually, all these guys have phenomenal skill, and that's what's carried them so far as well. Uh, so teamwork is, is going to be what it comes down to. Allegiance has always uh, had trouble beating CLG and beating EG, and now Denial is right up here with Allegiance. So these two teams are very similar, and their keys to victory, obviously, someone to step up as a leader. Contra, 
he's been the guy who's kind of been around for a while, so he's got to lead his team to victory. Uh, don't focus on the mistakes. And honestly, after yesterday, they, they hadn't been doing that too much at all. Yep. They were just looking forward, being positive. If something happened, it didn't matter. They were turning the game around when they were down 70 to, to five in a stronghold match. So, and then last but not least, welcome to Halo. Welcome to Halo Hook. It was amazing to see some of the Europeans on social media this morning waking up and watching the highlights from Hook last night just wishing they hadn't gone to bed. Now, guys, you get a chance to watch him. It's early here on Sunday. He's going to put on a show for you. This guy has some of the best accuracy in the game, yep. and his movement is on point. But yep. what I think a lot of people might be surprised by was just the decision-making from Denial all yesterday. These guys never really put themselves in a bad position, Ghost. While they can be super aggressive, they also know when to back down and play it slow and safe. And I think that it, it comes down to some some part of their individual talent, but also some part of alumni. Now, when it comes to Contra and, and that really that whole squad, they're known for their 1v1 play. And when it comes to 1v1s, I know Side always talks about it with Neighbor back home. Their positioning is so on point, right? They know how to force the spawns. They know how to move around the map. And yes, that's a 1v1 scenario, but it does translate into the rest of the game, right? You, you literally figure out how to kind of win all those individual battles when it comes to the teams. But then you have Alumni. Knight. He's, he's a guy who's been around for so long. And to have that type of guy who's so passionate, like, let's be real, the, the guy really cares about Halo, and he really cares about seeing Denial succeed. So when he's putting his heart and soul into making this team bond entirely, I mean, they're going to have that type of success that we've seen them had all weekend. And there you see our key player matchup, Contra, running the objectives in the CTF games yesterday, always involved in the strongholds. And then you got Nated, the veteran from Team Allegiance. We'll see how these two face off. Why are these two players so important, Strong Side? I mean, Katra, he's just got to be doing, he's got to be making the objective work move. Uh, they, they can't get too focused on slaying. They, sometimes they'll, they'll over slay and not get the objective moving. But then Naden, on the other hand, I mean, this guy does it all. He, we say he's a slayer, but he does do objective. He's whatever position he is in, and he needs to do something, he is going to do it. Yep, right. He's not a guy that's trying to just load up the stat board or anything like that. He'll, he'll pick up a triple kill, pick up the flag, run it home, and get covered from his team. Now we saw a whole lot of rockets in the hands of Boo Boo. Who do you want to see the sniper in the hands of? We saw Contra running it. You saw Hook. Who do you give it to first? Uh, I have to think that Boo Boo is the consistent one. Hook did make the play at the end of the whole series, sure, and it was amazing at that, but Boo Boo was the consistent guy throughout the day. All right. Sure. We'll see who's going to be carrying those power weapons. It's going to be a major fight for them as we get into some fresh game modes. It's time to kick it off, guys. In the semifinals, it's the best of seven. Walshie, Golden Boy, take it away. Thank you so much, guys. That's right, folks. It's going to be a great matchup, particularly because Denial has shocked the Halo community and taken them by storm with some phenomenal plays that we saw yesterday. Um, you know, and of course, uh, shutting down Team Liquid the way that they did was not something that I would have expected. Yeah, uh, obviously none of us expected that because none of us casters had Denial in our top eight. So no, shocking the entire Halo community. The I, caster you know, thing is these, ruined, by the way. I've just seen a lot of those names. I mean, sucks. Contra's no joke. He's it's, it's interesting because he's classified as an objective player in a way now by some of us analysts. But at the same time, you look at the slaying power and the shot that Contra has, and it's hard to argue. It's hard to fully classify him as one role, but seeing how many flags he pulled on Coliseum yesterday, you have to give him the objective role. That's right, folks. So it is now time for best of seven as we do the semifinals. We get right into this. First and foremost, Rig Strongholds will be our first battleground, then Regret Slayer, Truth Capture the Flag, Eden Strongholds, and if necessary, Coliseum Slayer, Fathom Capture the Flag, and Plaza Slayer. Any game types here that uh, that caught your attention? For me, honestly, I, I actually think Rig. The Rig Strongholds, the first one is the most important one to me. Yeah, the first two game types are, they have the most potential to be the most lopsided, because you can see Massive amounts of time being racked up on rig once you have outside, you know, control of basement and nest. And same with Regret Slayer. We've seen some stakes on that map, even in the finals of tournaments. Yeah. Um, so it's just a lot of potential for being one side matchup early on. However, you're going to have to see whatever happens here. You're going to need either Coach Elum Knight to help keep the Niles head in the game, or Nated and his veteran squad over there with the Legion is going to have to hopefully lead them and keep their heads if, if they lose the game. This is a seven game series. You can't get down about one game. So we are kicking things off with Rig Stronghold. Who do you want to start with? 
Uh, you know what? We got to kick it off with Suspector here. I, I like Suspector a lot. He's been kind of this, you know, player that's been, you know, he's good. He's a great player. Everyone's like, oh, man, you know, Suspector in L-Town. Or really, everyone's talking about L-Town. But I'm a fan of Suspector. I, I just like what he's been doing so far. <laughs> so uh, you can't hear this off stream right now, but the Allegiant squad are already streaming every call out. As soon as possible, I need to go to a listen-in with the Legions. We usually don't do this that early on, you know what I mean? You That's and I right. like to get some camera time, like to like to talk a bit I about like the match. Let, I like to let people resonate hear, with my voice. When you hear Nated just going absolutely nuts, you have to go to listen at some point. So uh, we'll get that for you in this. a little bit. But in the meantime, we see Suspected doing an incredible job with Railgun getting control of outside, and most importantly, blocking those carbine spawns. Uh, you know, I'm glad we were able to kick it off with him first and foremost, because, you know, you see right here, right, everyone said, L-Town, man, surprising player yesterday with what he brought to the table, but Suspector, this is a guy who's been around for a good long time, but folks, you asked for it, you wanted it. While she asked for it, he got what he wanted. We're going to be jumping into an Allegiance listening. Let's hear how this team is communicating with their Astros. I'm going for him. 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 i am the yeah, sniper killed me, guys. He's going for L. Let's guy barrels. Let's three. Oh, no, shot, top Let's go. 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 let us go while we were listening there, Denial, they have managed to fight right back into this game. And a double kill from Predevinator, huge plays from him. Uh, Boo Boo Doo Boo able to find one as well. And we are right back into this neck and neck battle. Yeah, based on that listening, you would think that Allegiance were winning 50 to 0. But their bark is louder than their bite because you can notice right now that Devinator and his Denial Esports squad are up by five seconds at the moment. And look at the movement here that's coming out of Devin. You know, smart enough. He has to be able to get this kill, though, and he gets it. Huge play. Can't find the double. Devin will fall. Hook finds Nated. Kratos takes out Devin, which means this Carbine spawn is going to look pretty good for them here. And this is the spawn you want. You get to be able to hold down the nest as well as the basement. This is the ideal position that you want in this map. It is so hard to fight out of that BR base and expect a lot of pressure to come out of the tower. Just as I say that, L-Town finds Hook, but Contra's there for a stop over on the Whitehall. And the aggression from Denial is actually quite refreshing to see because they have presence all over the place and ALG does not have an answer for it right now. Yes, just do an incredible job continually rotating back towards outside. You noticed for a moment there, Contra is over near Whitehall, Contra was over near Snipe Hall, but in the end, he continually rotated back and look at this. We're gonna see Boo Boo Doo Boo grab Camo, maybe hang around Whitehall, but eventually rotate back outside and make sure that his teammates spawn at Carbine. And they're getting a lot of time here. Goodbye Kratos as he falls into the depths of oblivion, but there you have Boo Boo Doo Boo, who is gonna sneak up on someone, but no need because his teammates are there for the stop. And every time you think someone's gonna make a play, Allegiance gets shut down immediately. And I have to highlight the fact that Allegiance also, they're, they're pushing in slowly, right? They're, they're going 
going after it one at a time. And I don't know, Walshy, like, I feel like there's just not a lot of options that Allegiance has at this point in time, and this is what they're left with. It just seems like they're, you know, they're yelling their callouts during that listening, but during that time, it seemed like Allegiance had control of the map. They don't seem to have as much of a coordinated effort when they don't seem to have either the railgun or the camo. So we're going to have to see what Allegiance can do to break out of this. But as of now, this is a dominating performance here for this denial squad because as we spoke about before, this can be one of the most one-sided game types. I mean, yeah. you get control of outside. We're seeing the number one seed, Allegiance, having trouble breaking out of the setup. The flank, look at the flank though, as Naded, he's gonna find him on the carbine, but a huge win for Devin, as Naded could not figure out how to stop him. And that would be a massive victory for Allegiance as they were able to get those two kills there, but it will not be the case. And another thing I wanna note here as well, Walshy, is just, you know, you see the players, right? You know, they get constantly pushed back. They're one shot and they have to run away because they don't wanna give up any useless deaths. They wanna be able to regroup and rally together. But Every single time they try and make an approach, you have a, a, a Denial just one-shotting them and then forcing them away from the objective. That right there, beautiful to see from Denial. Yes, and look at this. They have a, a mix of aggression and defense. Look at this right here. We had Boo Boo Dubu with Scattershot over at the nest. Or not at the nest, I'm sorry. Over at the Railgun Tower. And he decides to rotate all the way over and get this double cap. You gotta wonder if this is the right play or not, because this could be one of the situations where Allegiance could spawn out Carbine. But guess what? Devinator still blocking that spawn. And Boo Boo Dooboo just rotating back. So you just kind of notice where Boo Boo Dooboo and He's sometimes waiting. the aggressive players like Contra will push out towards Whitehall, push over towards Railgun, get a kill or two, rotate back. And look at this aggression. This is they so don't give them any here. breathing room. If you are Allegiance, this is you are over. frustrated. You are frustrated because of how. Boo Boo Doo Boo and the crew play that one. He let him cap it, made him believe that he was safe. But just when he thinks so, there is Boo Boo Doo Boo in denial for the W, and they take it 100 to 31. In what started off to be a very close game, but once Denial took that lead, they never looked back. It emulated a lot of Allegiance's gameplay. When I notice Allegiance has control of a map, they like to press their advantage even further. Get someone in a sneaky location like we saw at bottom tower there with Scattershot or someone over in Nest. Like they try to press the advantage even further and just instantly shutting down Allegiance. Winning that first game 100 to 31. That was domination from Denial. We take a look at the stats here in the post carnage report. You have 16 kills for Devin. Devin, you know, again, just to highlight this. The, the plays he had, you know, back, back rail there, so important, so important. You know, and just being able to stay alive with that carbine against Native when, Nate, when he had two players on the flank and you thought, oh man, this is it. Yeah. They're going to lose control of carbine and they could end up losing control of basement. They come out on top. Yeah. It really is just a testament to how talented these young players are. Yeah, and uh, seeing that objective score is no surprise. Seems how they got outslayed by 24 kills that game by the young guns of Denial Esports. Now here's my concern, and 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 it's a very well documented thing. You know, we saw it at uh, we saw it at X Games with Allegiance when something doesn't quite go their way, they tend to get frustrated, and most importantly, Nated gets frustrated. The key for this team now is going to be Nated keeping calm and making sure that his team has his back and that they are focused on this next game. Because as you said, right, surely they had to go into it thinking this one can snowball very quick. It could be in our favor or their favor. We don't know, but that's just the nature of the rig and how it plays out. So the key for Nated, stay calm, cool, and collected because they're going to need you. It's going to be a long series. Yes, uh, you you have to take it one game at a time. If you're going in this tournament, assuming you're going to be a 3-0 or 4-0 every team, you're going to be unpleasantly surprised by how good the competition here is at the North American Regional Finals. Especially when you're at the semifinals. Denial's not here for no reason, right? No. Like, this team <laughs> is fantastic. And when you think about the group that they came out of, right, and who they had to play, the old, like, had Denial been the team in that group, they would have come out winning, but they ran into that wall of EG, right? So you think about, you know, EG, top of the mountain, one of the best teams to play Halo right now. And then Denial going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them in a lot of those games, but ultimately EG coming out on top. Denial is feeling very good about themselves, toppling Liquid the way that they did, and then, of course, moving on to this, uh, you know, to this Allegiance matchup and winning 137. If you're Denial, man, you're, you're feeling fantastic. That's a convincing score. Um, one thing I want to highlight is some of our, our keys to victory may not be completely correct. Like, on one hand, yes, you had Nated hyped in the early, early game, but at the same time, 
that was just a back and forth early control part. We did see both teams tied at around the 20 point mark when Allegiance did have control of outside. But in the end, Denial got full control, had at some points runs of close to 70 seconds. You know, there might have been a small capture here and there of Nest or bottom center, but it was limited. And it just seemed like once this Denial squad gets control, it doesn't matter if Nate is hyped or not. If you're dead, you can call, call out as loud as you want, and it's not going to make a difference. That's right, folks. So let us know on the Twitters who you think is going to win. Will it be Denial? Use the hashtag Denial. Or will it be Allegiance? Use the hashtag Allegiance. Make sure you include hashtag Halo WC. And of course, spread the word. This matchup is only getting started. It's a best of seven while she we're in for a long one. On top of showing the support for the team you think is going to win, you have a chance of winning some amazing prizes here. That's some right. Astro headsets. I believe at the end we have an Xbox One we're giving That's away right. at some point. Just, uh, just some amazing free prizes all around. And it's for free. You just got to tweet out. Just got to tweet this out. Period. Just got to tweet it out. Just got to tweet it out. Uh, but uh, I, I also say this, you know, we teased it yesterday. We, we said, you know, there's going to be an announcement today about where, uh, where and when the Halo World Championships will take place. It's been a question on everyone's mind. You will find out today, people. I don't know when. You're just going to have to keep watching. I don't know when. I, I don't know. How, they don't tell me these things. They told me. They did? Yeah. It's just the never-ending struggle of Golden Boy. <laughs> um, but you know what? It's okay. It's okay. Uh, we just got to take it one game at a time. Yes. Uh, but you know what, though? Walshy, it's exciting stuff. And, and if this competition is any indication, uh, the evolution that these players have had, uh, you know, from the start of Halo 5's release till now, shows the wide breadth of ability that you can get with this game. Just the tricks, the jumps, the you know, the how to take advantage of sparring abilities. That was I was in the back of the warm uh, the warm up area with Snakedown, and he was showing me some routes on Regret that were just absurd, absurd routes. And I thought to myself, I'm definitely gonna go home, hop, turn on my stream, <laughs> and just do all of this. I'm gonna become <laughs> incredible. Okay, uh, if anyone wants. So should we look out for you next season? Definitely. Of the Halo World Championship. Hundred yeah. percent. I'm I'm uh, I'm coming out of retirement. All right. Coming out of retirement. Me and Walsh, uh, Walsh you want to be a duo? Uh, I think we might be able to pull something off here. I think we might be able to. I think between myself and you and uh, forget Benson, um, you know, we might. <laughs> because one thing I'm thinking is, if when you look at like the squad, like the now squad, they have some of these players who's never competed at a top That's level. That's actually like, very true. And, All jokes aside. Who can boo boo doo boo and. I'm a player who's competed at top level, and you're a player who's never competed at top level. So we could have that right, <laughs> that right mix of players. I was thinking you were going to take it to the game, and instead you just brought it back and burned me again. Man, I'm such a nice person. You know? <laughs> anyway, here we go, folks. It's going to be Regret Team Slayer, and we're going to kick it off with Boo Boo There goes that uh, overshield there, and they are going to be able to net it at 11.51. We'll see how this comes into play here as they get aggressive on the carbine That's side. such an odd start. Look at the scoreboard now. 1-0. That means only one player on the Legion squad really gave a huge contestion towards the overshield. Seems like they just kind of gave it up. That's and that's right. not what you want to do. But instead, looks like Allegiance went for that fuel rod cannon. L-Town eventually taken down, jumping on with the hype man himself, Naded, the veteran who's been playing for 11 years. Can he move on to the finals and maybe get his first major live event victory day we'll find out but first they gotta win this regret slayer yeah and contra actually challenging him with the fuel rob and aided able to stay alive here he, he knows that he's surrounded so he just wants to find better positioning getting up up top finding one then those are those jumps i was talking about some great positioning here Nated and suspect are finding two and he will get cleaned up top man but it won't matter because suspect and the crew they're feeling pretty good here despite the score being down by three they are uh, you know making the appropriate moves here and looking to get denial off of those uh, spawn rotations and get those kills if possible. L-Town with some help as well. Over to him. Yeah, and uh, you just notice how much trust that these Allegiance players have in their teammates. You saw Nated patiently just shooting someone above him top center and just kind of waiting for that person to get finished off by his teammate. He didn't feel like he had to jump out and challenge because he knew as soon as he jumped out top center, he was going to get melted by another opponent. So just so much trust from this Legion squad. They practiced just as much, if not more, than every other squad here at the Halo Regionals here in Columbus, Ohio. And without a doubt, too, you know, when you mentioned about the work that they put in, I mean, they did even fork, he, he stopped streaming. He had one of the most popular Twitch streams 
for Halo player, and he stopped streaming so he could focus on this opportunity right here. He decided to surround himself with up-and-coming players instead of tried-and-true veterans. And because of this, he came into this tournament the number one seeded team. Like that right there just speaks to the work and dedication that Allegiance have put into this one. Alternatively, though, this has certainly been a battle of fresh faces because if you would have told me HCS seasons one and two, we would see, you know, the likes of Suspector, L-Town, and Kratos competing against Contra and Hook and Dububu Dubu and so on and so forth in the semifinal of the North American regionals, I would have said you were crazy. I said, you got to take some crazy pills because that needs to be cured. And here we are today, Walshi. It's a new generation of Halo. Yes, you had told me that somebody who's been playing Halo competitively for two months would be possibly making it to the finals, let alone even the semifinals here at uh, the North American Regionals. Like it's you absurd. said, you'd be, you would not have believed it. But we now have players like Boo Boo Doo Boo and Hook, and I want to hear how this squad is communicating because we saw Allegiance when they, uh, when they were partially in control on rig, they were all chaotic, hectic, yelling out every call out. Let's see the difference here as we go to a denial after listening. Up, Blue Bridge. Bridge. Nice. Oh my god, oh, Devin! That was three! That was three! Last yeah, guy point one. Get control. Go on car. Watch, car. Watch, watch Blue. Death live, live, live. I can, I can. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna be pushing P. Car now. Car. Nate is one shot. Nate is one shot. Nate is one shot. One shot. One shot. Blue Bridge. Top P, top P, right now. Look at P2. P2. Weak, weak, weak. He's got DMR as well. Very weak. Stay alive. They're at Blue. Getting shot from top Blue card or something. And bottom Blue car. And bottom car. Red side, probably gonna come out. Come out, 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 we got one, another one there. Yeah, yeah, red red one. Red 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 nice. Red 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 D1 D1 one shot. Ah, yeah. dead. That was two. Oh, it's the top red. Oh, it's the top red. Stay alive, Cody. Stay alive. Is pushing you? No, 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 no. He's, He's up. Here. DMR. Red DMR. Red DMR. Top red, Lovey. I left blue. I left blue. They're going to be at blue. We need to push their base. Guys. We need to get ready to push. Oh, oh, to push red Widow. Red Widow here. Another one. Another one. You're left, Cody. Come here. Middle on P2. Come here. Middle on Kratos. Come here. Middle on P2. 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 Last one. Pushing. Come here. I'm here. He might be hiding. I'm down by much, guys. Probably hiding. He's probably hiding. Yeah, for sure hiding. Yeah, he is. Red tide. Red tide. Red tide. One shot. One shot. Nice. Nice. Stay alive, Cody. Come here. Come here. Blue bridge. Blue bridge. Blue DMR. One shot. Blue DMR. Very weak. Very weak. Blue card out. Blue card out. I traded. I traded. Phenomenal listening, and I'm gonna tell you why. You heard the voice of alumni, the coach of this team. Being a, just keeping this squad focused here and telling them where they want to go. Alumni was a competitor. He also played in the qualifiers, and they're looking to bring this game right back to Allegiance. 33-36, just the uncanny ability to stay in this one is something you see out of veterans. But here is Denial doing what they do best, never say die. <laughs> just like Goonies, never say die. Oh. Um, we noticed that good reference, dude. <laughs> Hook is top car. And uh, they keep focusing this top scenario. You notice when this denial squad was over at oh. Blue Base. Oh, give them the hands. Oh, man. They, they kept trying to always focus on car side. I don't know if that's their main strategy, but it seems to make most sense that, hey, if you're stuck in one of the bases, push out towards Carbine side. You're going to have more cover. It's not like you can push easily over towards top pink and stay alive. So I noticed that this denial squad for sure prioritizes car when they're stuck in one of the bases. Ooh. And we are just seeing from the opposite point of view, we just see so many allegiance out shooting uh, these members of Denial. New, S, new OS should be up in a little bit, and you're going to see uh, Hook and the crew get prepared for it. They do manage to pick it up, and that is going to go to Predevinator. And, and this is actually very important because that last OS that uh, Allegiance got actually didn't make much of a difference because of, and believe it or not, solid Needler play from Denial that kept that player back inside of the base. I didn't think the Needler would do that much damage against an overshield, but it just kept him back. He had no opportunity to move forward. I don't remember who the player was exactly. I think it was uh, probably uh, Suspector, but regardless, 
That's well, just what Denial is so good at doing I don't here. think we've ever seen somebody use a Needler in tournament play. Have we ever seen that? Not at all. Denial is just any one kill. Play. One <laughs> kill away here from being able to reclaim this one. Player's going to challenge, and Devin's going to get the kill. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a tied game. Player's going to be top mid, and that is going to be a confirmed kill. But 45-45 is the score. With plenty of time left on the clock here. Boo Boo Dubu finds one. Two players trying to challenge outside, inside of the Carbine Red area. But Predevinator and the crew continuing to keep them at bay inside of the base. Devinator has been a force with the DMR, whether they are in control and he sits at top cars in Anchor, or if he's inside the base and shooting towards car. One way or another, he seems to be like this player that's kind of a little bit further back, doing damage across map and buying time for his teammates. 47, 47 here, 48, 47 here as ALG picks up Book. Suspector now finds a kill on Contra. One player top mid. Devin has to get away from this one though. Nate's flying in. He's surrounded, chasing the kill. He finds 48. Can he stay alive though? Somehow he can't because Allegiance will get the kill and they will go up or they will tie the series one to one. That was a clutch victory for Allegiance, but Denial brought it back. Yes, Allegiance just showing that they can bounce back from a loss. We've talked about before that there are some emotional squads out there. Obviously, most notable would be like Renegades. However, Allegiance is also one of those squads where they, they sometimes yeah. don't show up to play. But look at L-Town. He says, guess what? We're at Championship Sunday, and I'm going to go plus 12 in this Team Slayer game. And they, they smelled blood. They knew that Devin was down there exposed, so they just went right for it. That right there, folks, was, uh, you know, just a great collapse from Allegiance. And for a brief moment, I thought Denial were going to be able to bring this game back, but Allegiance keeping it going and made it a good showing, but L-Town was the superstar that game. 21 kills on Regret Team Slayer. Fantastic. Yes, just great performance all around from the squad. And the interesting part is we talk about Regret as being one of those game types and maps where you can get a snowball victory, similar like Rig Strongholds, where you could yeah. blow out the other team, win 50 to 30 and get, you know, what's known as a stake in the game. However, both these squads just keep it back and forth. They know how to get out of the spawn traps. What most impressed me was Devinator the Denial Squad, when they were trapped over at Blue Base, they played it so calm. They just got a DMR and they focused on Carbine side. I think that might be one of the problems to where these other teams are just getting spawn killed over and over again, that they try to push out pink. Because sometimes it seems like an open area, like, oh, there's no one pink too. I can push that way. But ends up being a death trap so many times we run up the street. Break down the rest of the series for me though. Golden Boy, what other game types do we have to look forward to? Well, now we have Truth captured a flag. The, re the uh, original map, of course, regret the remix of Truth. Um, Truth. Many people know it as midship, but it is a reimagining in Halo 5. Then we're going to have Eden Strongholds, Coliseum Slayer, Fathom Capture the Flag, Plaza Slayer. Uh, and, and we will definitely see that Coliseum Slayer matchup because guaranteed we're going to go to a game five. Question is, will this go the distance? Capture the Flag go on Truth. Uh, what, are you, what are you looking for here uh, from Allegiance specifically? Because they were able to take, uh, or they weren't able to take that objective game at first. Um, but L-Town's raw slang certainly shined on regret. Yeah, uh, CTF is quite different from Strongholds because what happens in a game type like objective game like Strongholds where Allegiance got dominated during that 131 victory is it's kind of all or nothing where if you only have one or two members alive, you can't really do too much as far as objective work or distracting their team because guess what? They can just collapse on those last two players and not be punished for it. Yeah. Whereas you have these static, static objectives. You have flag on your side, flag on the opposing side. So what happens is when Allegiance are down in numbers, they can actually just crouch walk around, buy time for the teammates to regroup, and they can even put pressure on the opposing objective. So what's going to happen here is we are going to put the Denial Squad to the test and see, do they know how to divide their numbers correctly? Do they know how to send players back to deal with this Allegiance aggression? Or are they all going to collapse as a team, grab a flag, and run it back together? This is going to be a real test of skill for some of these newcomers like Hook, because you're looking at someone like Nated who's been playing maps like Midship for 12 plus years, almost as long as Hook has been alive. Yeah, that's actually the sad reality of it. Uh, and But you know what, though? If anything, what, what has kind of shined for me this weekend is I'm never going to count out Denial, no matter what. Uh, you know, it, they are practiced. They know exactly what they want to what, want to do. And, and you know, you, you speak about Nated's, uh, you know, veteran 
uh, leadership and just veteran gameplay. Let's not forget that Denial has a veteran behind them as well in Alumni. And you heard in that listening how concise Alumni was. Well, yes, he was Drexel's players. Even Strongside had said after having spoken to Hoop that one of the keys to success that who credits to is uh, alumni just helping coach him through, keeping him calm throughout the games, and helping him make those difficult decisions. So we're gonna have to see if that comes into play this next match. If alumni's directing Hook saying, guess what? This is a time where you don't get distracted by uh, Allegiance baiting the flag and pointing it out. So let's jump back on with Devonair, the man who was taken down for the 50th kill last game. Can he redeem himself and help his Denial squad get a 2-1 lead in the series? And a great stop there on Camo. So that will be picked up around 11.45. Expect to see that one uh, back in about two minutes here. But the Camo, of course, uh, you know, plays a role. We've seen so many players make clutch plays with it. But here comes Denial. The hype train moves on through to the red base as Devin is going to scout outside and make sure no one's pushing up over on the big tower. And just look at this aggression. They collapsed his team. They got two or three members of Legion's down. They pushed in from top center, from Carbine and Pink all at the same time. Oh. And what a lunge there by Suspector staying alive. We're going to jump on with the sword. All right. Well, oh, Suspector's going to fall as well over to Nated, who's looking around, trying to see if he can find that kill. Of course, the flag is going to be outside of the red base, so they have to get this return now. Hook is going to go in for the challenge. Nated cannot stay alive as we jump over to Kratos' POV. Plasma pistol in hand. Can he do work with the green gun? As he finds Hook in front of him. And another player in front, too. That was, uh, I'm not quite certain on who that's going to be going after him. I think it was the Spectre, but regardless of the fact, though, that uh, Denial keeping that flag going here while she Yeah, I, I think that's a bit of a mistake. Denial, what happens, they drop the flag out front of the base, and that's a pretty vulnerable location. They have to get so many kills now in order to turn this into a capture, and this flag is pretty much all but gone. I don't even think Allegiance needs to jump on the recovery. Yeah, and sometimes you just need to know when to give it up. And here comes Nated as he's going to bring this flag over by P2. He needs his teammates to have the cutoffs as well so that this way he can make this flag cap a reality. And this is going to be it. Allegiance are going to go up one to one. But you have a Nade flying in from Devin. Will Devin and the crew be able to rally this one back to their base and tie it up one to one? Kratos, the only one across the map for he this Allegiance the play. squad. He needs to make a huge play, and that's a great start to it. I would not be surprised to see him get this kill and at least get the toss out, and that's exactly what Kratos is doing. This is the objective aggressiveness that I was talking about before that's going to throw off the now squad. They're used to be able to just focus on the static area. Like, guess what? We kill them at the stronghold and stay here, but here we're going against veterans who've been playing maps like midship for uh, over a decade. Hook has to adapt. But they're able to get the kill. Now they just need that return to come back. Who has the flag on the red team? L-Town has the flag for uh, Allegiance inside of the red base. He's going to just continue to linger around the window and, and not really concern himself too much, just being more of a nuisance and exposing himself, thus frustrating Denial even more and trying to help out with that flag. Them. Hook going in, uh, trying to dip into P2 here. A suspector tries to charge him, but he can't make it. Yeah, end up getting baited out. I was just worried a little bit by, by suspector right there, playing too much defense. I think we saw that same mistake uh, on Friday when we saw Mickwin worried a bit too much about playing defensive with Camo rather than being aggressive with it. Yeah, waiting now to see what the play is for Allegiance as they are on the prowl, identifying that, you know what, they're going to be surrounded inside of that base. We just need to be able to get one or two kills to start that pincer, to make that approach. But a player P2 could cause a problem, and it seems like that's going to be the case. Boo 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 moves in there for the challenge. Nated grabs the flag yet again. You have two members of Allegiance on that left side of the base. It's going to be Suspector trying to work with his teammate here, uh, who is going to be right behind him, I believe, by the bubble. And just also that awareness from Suspector is phenomenal. And he tried to get up top. But a great nade from both Nated and Kratos is going to stop two members of Denial. SMG moving in, finding one. They get the return. And it's going to be 2-0. Can Allegiance rally this one for a third cap? They're going to take it right through the middle, and it seems like this could very well be the case as he goes in for the toss. He does manage to make the toss happen, but there will be a return right away from Denial. Yes, and Boo Boo Doo Boo going on the offensive, trying to get the counter counter cap, I guess you'd want to call it. The um, counter of the counters. <laughs> Um, but either way, you just notice how much superior this Legion squad is in the objective game on this map. These years and literal decades of experience are showing on midship right now. Man, you know, that could have been uh, bad really quick to get that relay there the way that uh, Allegiance had it prepared. But a camo pickup at 741 by Hook 
could spell doom for Allegiance if they are not careful. I don't like this play this. already. I don't like this play. Look at this. He's using camo as a defensive Well, he also up. doesn't have much of a choice, too, right? Either that or he allows him to pull that flag all the way out to Carbine. I, yeah, I, I, don't know. I disagree. I think you've got to push towards the opposing flag and help get those slaves on the way back. Uh, look at that. Kook eventually taken down. You know, he's able to get one or two kills, but in the end, seems like the distraction has been done. All right, player top mid, and you're always going to see players going after that top mid part because it is so vital. The Spectre, though, is able to get the kill with the AR on Boo Boo Doo Boo. Hoop finds Naded with a grenade and a double kill to boot as he's looking top mid. And one thing Allegiance has done so well is maintain their presence at top mid. And Kratos with a double, looking to make some moves. Look at this aggression Legion squad. For the majority of this game, they have been over on the now half of the map just putting pressure. Anytime they get a kill or two, they end up on the flag and out shooting by the duck of, I believe that, that was, was Devin. Devin. That was incredible a incredible movement play. right there by Pre-Devinator. Suspector so and uh, will not find any luck inside of P2. Meanwhile, Nated, he continues to be top mid and be a nuisance, but he won't find luck there as well, as now you're going to start to see the onslaught coming in from Denial. Boo Boo Doo Boo and Devin just adding kills to that kill column. L-Town going in for the challenge, but he's going to be one shot, so he knows I have to back away from here. I just need to get around th these guys as soon as I can. Nated could be the one to make the play as he moves inside of the base, finds Devin right in front of him. A flight cap could go in for Denial, though, as Denial does a brilliant job keeping him back. No cap just yet, though, and yes, it is going to go through. Denial answer back, but they're still down by one. And look how hard they had to fight for that cap, and look how patient Nate even played in that situation. He realized, yeah. guess what, I'm not just going to jump out and give this death by any means. He realized that if he stays alive long enough, even if they give up this cap, which they can afford, they could possibly turn into a counter cap situation. And that's what you see right now from Allegiance as they are on the aggressive push in the denial base. I was going to say that, you know, that actually is a great, great example of how Allegiance, you know, thinks ahead, right? Most players think, oh, you got to make this stop happen. You don't want to give them a cap, but no, you can, I mean, look, they've been living inside of the denial base this whole time. They've always had a member there just bothering them, harassing them, not allowing them to the two make members, any progress. Two members of denial right now, focused on Nate on the bottom of the base, trying to look for him and clear him out. They are just playing defensive right now. Even if they kill Nated, guess what? They are in no position to grab a flag. Every second is counting against the Snow Squad. They have to get aggressive soon and push out if they want to have a chance of getting a second capture. Suspector finally falls. Kratos now fighting a battle back here by Blue, but won't find much out of that one, though. But regardless, you got to highlight just how, and a great double kill for Nated, but you got to highlight how intense this matchup is thus far, and most importantly, how amazing Allegiance has been in keeping Denial on the back foot, keeping them in defense the entire time, Walshie. And look at Pre-Devonair, eventually taking down top center. Great shots by Kratos, because that could have been devastating if Devin was able to stay alive. We do now see Boo Boo Doo Boo up to now. He doesn't have help, aggressive. though. You gotta wonder, though, all right, is the bottom middle toss of the flag oh, the sweet. way to go? Oh, my goodness. What great movement there by Suspector. But what I want to point out is maybe this inexperience showing on, on Truth, great a.k.a. Shot. midship Made right it. now, for the Snell squad, because the toss of the flag in bottom center is a move you generally do if you're trying to buy time and get some sort of counter cap or stop them from getting their original cap. It's more of a, uh, like I said, attempt to buy time compared to an actual cap opportunity. So you got to wonder if Boo Boo even need to pull that flag. Should have just laid and tried to maybe commit the flag towards Pink or Carbine? Maybe he thought about if I throw that flag down, that's going to get them to focus their attention forward. But maybe, for but we're talking about Allegiance exactly, right here. The number one exactly. seed, they're not falling for those old tricks. Exactly. That is the kind of stuff that Allegiance just will not fall for, especially considering they know how many people were alive because they got those two kills. Suspector, though, finds a camo yet again, and Devin cannot get out of there as he will fall from L-Town's Magnum. Now another player on the move. Boo Boo Doo Boo won't find luck as Nated challenges him. And look at Hook just getting double Nated as soon as he walks out of P2. Let's see, we got to slow down here. It's Contra, who's a player that we actually haven't really highlighted all that much. Contra's been mostly quiet throughout this series. He was a superstar in those last couple games yesterday. Tonight's been about Boo Boo Doo Boo and, and most importantly Devin too. Devin's been stepping up big time. Yeah, just uh, keep in mind, think about how many flag pulls we saw from Contra and so many great objective plays we saw in Coliseum. However, these opportunities are not presenting themselves here on Truth. Ali's just playing the perfect balance of defense and being aggressive and putting so much pressure on the Denial flag.
I give credit to Contra here as well for not hanging out inside of the base, but instead backing up to P2 with the battle rifle. He knows that he has the advantage with the gun that will win most of those battles in that uh, you know mid to long range situation. And map like Troop, battle rifle sometimes is king. So Contra staying alive, to me, critical play, because now they're gonna be able to make this flagpole reality, taking over to P2's side. They just need to get those cutoffs here. And look at the curve on that freaking plasma pistol, man. It is so frustrating. But look at the pressure that Contra has been putting toward. We have a tied game, people. Two to two. Denial answers right back. And a huge amount of credit goes out to Contra right there. As you said, they were down in numbers. He had no qualms backing up for a bit, going pink, doing was damage, a veteran play. and pushing back and forth. I think I even used to get in a big, uh, I used to make a big mistake dirty. back when I used to compete where I would push up and once I got to a certain, uh, like, I, I pushed so far across the map, I would never You had back. a mental block. You're yeah, like, I, I can't go like, back because I, can't go I too much progress. I go forward, yeah. yeah. <laughs> forward stick syndrome, bro. Yep. It's a thing. <laughs> it's a real thing. We need medication. But seriously, though, I think that that play right there was denial at its finest. They just know how to work together. It is incredible what these young players have been able to accomplish here so far. Yes, and we're noticing Devinator for this man up. I've, I've noticed many other times it seems like Devinator kind of the, is kind of that anchor player where he's over at uh, top middle or back of his base just doing damage, creating opportunities. Look at the way he's staying alive. Up. But geez, just that map awareness and movement and being aggressive, realizing, guess what? I'm one shot, but this player bottom red does not know I'm one shot. So I'm going to challenge this out and use that to my advantage. Unfortunately for Devin, couldn't stay alive. Now things have kind of reset as Allegiance have cleared two kills from their base. But I love Allegiance's constant control of the top mid, Walshy. That right there, you know, being able to get those angles are imperative and needed. Pushing in here, getting aggressive, knows, hey, I have a teammate for assistance. We can make this flagpole happen. That's two members down. There's the third one down for Denial. This is a great opportunity for Allegiance to secure this win. It looks like everyone's coming back because they realize this is the last flag cap. This is it. And l town going to ground pound this one in. He won't be we able to make it. We will see in a second and he does gets get the it. Cap. <laughs> Allegiance. Just wanted to make it a little more suspenseful. <laughs> Allegiance gets the game three victory halfway there. But of course, Denial did not make that one easy. They win three to two in a grueling near 12 minute battle. Yes, now we move on to the next. I'm trying to look at some of these stat screens see if I can see a number of uh, Look at the slang from Contra and Hoop though, right? You had 24 kills for Contra, 27 kills for Hoop. Great showing and that I, would I not believe they outslayed. I did not uh, yeah, look they, at they all outslayed. the slays here for a second, but that just goes to show the objective play from Allegiance and their years of experience on maps like Truth and Midship came to pay. They, they prevailed just because Came of, down to those plays. Yes, came down to those crucial plays, like I'm talking about, that play where Boo Boo Doo Boo tossed the flag out. There's a big difference between committing and running the flag out bomb center and eventually re reverting towards car one or pink one, and there's a big difference between tossing the flag out bomb center as bait. When you toss the flag out in bomb center, you need to have pretty much three or four dead in order to finish running that up. Yeah. Too many other players are aware that, all right, I can get in a position where I can just throw a grenade and one-shot somebody down there. And so just goes to show that Allegiance weren't falling for the tricks that were presented by Denial. They're like, hey, Very we true. saw this back in 2005, 2006. Not falling for that trick. Yeah, and, and I think also in that play when you mentioned about what Boo Boo Doo Boo did there, you know, maybe just staying in the base. We're, you know, not trying to uh, attract attention to himself, but just staying alive in the base yeah, and catching him off the flank. That right there could have been a difference maker. But also I would say that Contra and Hook and the, and the slaying that they were able to accomplish contributed to that second cap, and that's what tied up that game. So Allegiance, of course, proving that it is not about how much you slay, it's about how you slay and how you capitalize on your opportunities. Now we're going to be moving on to Eden Strongholds, and we have seen some highlight reels from Denial on Eden. Yes, so far, we have. We've seen incredible plays from some of these squads on Eden. More so, I would say, on uh, like Eden Slayer, where we see sniping sprees back to back. But Eden Strongholds actually does not have a sniper up on this map. So we're going to see who can control the rockets and the two power ups that are on this map. However, looking at the past of the series, we saw game number one Strongholds on Rig heavily favored this Denial squad. So can they bring it back and win a Strongholds number two? Or are Allegiance going to prove it and just say, guess what? That first game was a fluke. We are going to win this game, take the series to 3-1, and hopefully close out these young guns. 
course, guys, let us know who you think is going to win. Use a hashtag Denial or the hashtag Allegiance when you tweet. Of course, include hashtag Halo WC, guys. Of course, we have great matches on the way. CLG versus EG will be a rematch at the X Games, and it will be a semifinal matchup here, thus guaranteeing that for the first time in a very long time, <laughs> very long time we will not right see that. an EG CLG final. We're going to have some fresh faces competing for the top dollar prize. And all these teams in the top eight have qualified for the $2.5 million tournament at the Halo World Championships. Of course, information on the Halo World Championships will be coming hashtag soon. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> um, but Eden Strongholds, we have uh, Denial who, and even then I, I want to mention more so about, or not more so, but less so about the sniper and, and those plays that they made with it, but also about how they play Eden, right? We saw Eden Slayer for them. They like to slow that down and really just turn it into a snail's game, right? Where it's just slow, incremental successes. This one's not going to be slow. Not now, at there's all. two things to keep in mind. You think about the Rick Stronghold. Obviously, the Snail Squad knew what they had to do. They said, we only have to hold basement and nest and hold this one area. Allegiance are a tricky squad. They know how to put pressure in open areas. So you can realistically hold any two strongholds on this map. It is a viable strategy. There are some that are better setups, but like I said, it is viable to hold multiple different setups on this map. And I like this play. What I was going to say this. L-Town is delaying the spawn of this overshield. Not only that, is he's going to wait till somebody actually comes around, and he's going to use that one second of invulnerability to his advantage in case someone has now. rockets. So what's going to happen is rockets might come around the corner, a point might come around the corner, and check this out. He oh, now has man. that absolute full overshield. It is not appreciated at all. And that one rocket didn't kill him. This guy's oh. like, what the heck? I had to use two rockets. But Either way, great know. play by... Uh, by L-Town there. I don't think they know when that, that overshot's no, coming up. They don't. So that's going to throw Coach Elumnite for a loop. That's right. He's expecting that one to have been picked up at 11.55. A little does he know it was at 11.35, around that range. So anything can happen at this point. Booba Doobie, though, with the Rockets, they do have control of two. Now what he's doing, he's waiting to see if anyone steps in Blue Bend. He can tell as soon as the Meteor goes up. So what he's going to do is shoot his rock as soon as he someone, sees someone step in. And right there, easy kill for Boo Boo Doobu. And the Now Squad is up to a nice five-point lead here on Eden Strongholds. And up going for a trouble cap. Why not? Yeah, but they are going to lose one. And uh, I'm not sure which one that is because of the screen orientation. That's going to be Blue Bend. So, so long as they can maintain control of this blue side. But the spawns are going to be coming out of that one for Legion. So this could be their play. They want to go after Red Nest and Catwalk and use that light rifle to its full advantage because it is a devastating weapon when you're able to do work with it. But a flank from behind, and he won't be able to predict that one, though. Meanwhile, a double kill coming out for Hook, looking for another up top on Red Nest. Does he get the kill? His teammate is going to get it instead. Boo Dubu with the stop, and they get right back into this one, holding both stronghold points. Very solid play, and new Rockets come up in 13. I think Hook is too young to know the legend of an AR god named Big Sauce, but he just summoned him right there in that last play at top catwalk, getting that amazing double kill. And we're going to have to see what he does right now, because he is the only member alive, and that is not what you want to see when you have a one-on-one -on -one fight. So Spectre getting the better of Hook and getting control of Rockets. And a triple cap to Boot Wall Sheet. Now that means that they can come back into this game relatively quick. So Denial have to figure out an answer as soon as they can. And of course, with Suspector hanging out, you know what he's waiting for, that new overshield. How funny would it be if uh, L-Town didn't actually tell him when it was up? He's like, come on, man. When's this overshield coming up? This is one time where it's like oddly backfiring because he yeah. wants to get that overshield and be a presence somewhere on the map where these uh, Denial members are. 934 was the overshield pickup. We'll see that again at the 734 minute mark in the game timer. Catwalk, though, is being taken away, and you do have some pressure coming out of Boo Boo Doo Boo up top. They're able to clear Catwalk, which was a huge success for them because now they can maintain this, and the Rockets coming up top. That's going to be an instant kill, a great secure in defense as they continue to maintain control of this double cap that they have here. Oh, and Sticky we'll grenade. I did not see who that was from. And I believe it was Devinator. <laughs> he hit, still had rockets there. So that is a huge kill by Devin. We're going to jump on with Hoop. But what I was trying to say is you notice how now this trip cap squad for denial. is. Uh, they're absolutely reactive. They realize, guess what? We'll find out where Denial is pushing from and try to go push over there. But like I said, that, that plasma grenade could not be understated how imp or cannot be overstated how important that was killing that player and getting control rockets. And they're not expecting to come out of here. Here he is right there. Hoop trying to find one but two members 
two members, three members, as a matter of fact, of Allegiance were just waiting for Hoop to come down that catwalk here. Now over by Blue Yard, Boo Boo Doo Boo looking for something. A well-placed grenade there on Kratos. Nothing you could do about that one. He's not going to try and put pressure inside of the catwalk here. Finds one. A great shot on Suspector. Not much he could do about that, but those spawns coming through. Will they be able to get catwalk? No. Not to be theirs right now as Contra is there. Of course, some uh, preliminary shots, but he won't be able to clear anything out because, of course, they get that reset. No cap for them. I love how Contra back down there, he realized, guess what? I'm not going to be able to try to challenge one of these players to the death here who is over on Catwalk. So he decided to just kind of back down and look for anyone's flanking through. He realized, guess what? We have two strongholds at the moment. What a change oh. of events right there. That took a lot of discipline just not to shoot that second Exactly. Rocket. I was going to say that, right? He knew I have him one shot. I still have health. I have more shields than he does. But that player right in front of him, he's going to trade. But in any case, I love that play. That was so smart. And now, who can now know that that OS is going to be coming up here? Does he grab it? Yes, he does. Looking for one. Looking for another in front of him. That's going to be Suspect having to run away. But, oh, there's a gift from the Guardians. A rocket that he's going to pick up and looking to use to its full potential here as they want to clear out anyone getting aggressive on Red Nest. Now, I'm interested to see how Hoop plays this. He knows that these members of Allegiance are most likely spawned over at Tower slash Blue, Plat or Blue Catwalk. However, he decides to clear out red. He wants to make sure that they have red nest because, as we see, we see one of the odd steps. You see that they have red nest and blue bend. So at this point, Denial's strategy is make sure we hold outside and clear out blue and red base. But instead, Denial decides to go for the trip cap as Legion pushes out. We're going to see if they can hold this, though. Yeah, this is uh, going to be tough here, but a huge win for Devin. And no progress being made on Blue Ben just yet. I think, actually, they are. So they know that everyone's going to be there. So if they can keep them pinned down, you're going to get that tower spawn, which is going to force them to have to go after Catwalk. L-Town, though, one shot. He gets cleared out. Kratos going to be inside of that red Catwalk. He's going to fall as well. Yes, he will. And a three-cap maintained as wisely enough. Devin gets that predicting nade on Suspector. Did not expect it. 76 53. Trip cap in place. Denial looking to do work. What a beautiful light rifle shot from Devin as well. And what incredible shots by Devin. He's just been consistently that player who kind of sits back, does so much damage across the map, and is taken advantage of by Boo Boo, Dubo, and Hoop. And look at this. They said, guess oh, what? Goodness. You're not getting Gracious. catwalks. You're not stopping the bleeding. This game could end any moment if Denial does not allow Allegiance to capture one of these strongholds. That's right, and they're not going through. They're rotating perfectly. They know Catwalk spawns coming up, but that is it. Insult to injury has been added. 100 points for them. They take another stronghold matchup against Allegiance. Two to two, folks. This has been an incredible series so far. Top quality Halo is what we're seeing played here. And 153. Ah, right, man, what a game. Yep, out slain again, not nearly as much this game, but the most surprising part to me was how Alumni was able to eventually figure out that overshield time, because we saw Hook get the overshield, I want to say, around the uh, six minute mark. Yeah. And that what's overshield impressive about wasn't. that is they offset it by 25 or so seconds. You, that's a, a massive amount of time that you do not want to waste. However, I will say that the very first overshield that Allegiance did get control of went to almost pure waste. I mean, it was the right mindset and on paper, a great play where l -Town saying, guess what, as soon as someone comes around the corner, I'm not only gonna have 60 or 70% of my overshield, I'm gonna have absolute full overshield. He was also going in with the mindset saying, if someone comes around the corner with rockets and I have the overshield charging at that exact moment, that rocket will do absolutely zero damage to him. But unfortunately, as soon as he dropped on top of the red nest, two rockets, just one rocket hit him. Oh, oh, I mean, I think like 75% uh, of his o OS was gone. Then a second rocket came through, wiped him out completely. And that was yeah, it. Yeah, like that I was said, it was wrote. kind it of was, a wasted yeah. OS. And it At was tough point, to see because it, like, it could have went so well, but it ended up going poorly. Well, folks, that is going to lock things up here for game number four as we're tied up. Tied up four to four, of course. Guys, Denial has had, I mean, an incredible run, a storybook run here at the North American Regionals. Columbus, Ohio has been very, very kind to these young players. Let's take a look at the series layout, though. If you're just joining us, Denial looks strong on strongholds. 137 and 153 were the two victories that they were able to net. But when it came down to that Regret Slayer matchup, key decisions at the end gave Allegiance the victory. And then game three, Truth captured a flag. Well, it was a slobber knocker, a grueling battle, but Allegiance managed to come out on top despite being outslayed. Now we go over to Coliseum Slayer. Anything's possible here as we're talking about 
Rockets on map, sniper rifle on map, scatter shot down low, and just a lot of craziness. You know, before this series, I would have predicted Allegiance. Uh, even though we're tied 2-2 and Allegiance are showing some good signs of life, they, you know, they won that Truth, CTF, and they won the Regret Slayer. They're both in small margins. And when I look at these last, these next two game types, especially game number six, which is Fathom CTF, I looked at how Denial did such a great job on Truth CTF and were almost able to take out Denial, or was almost able to take out Allegiance. However, we're looking at Fathom CTF. This is a Halo 5 map, and these are some Halo 5 players here in the Denial squad. So I would not be surprised to see, regardless of who wins game number five, which is Coliseum Slayer, I expect game number six to for sure be a uh, Denial win. Really? Yes, I, I think so. Just based on how well I've seen them been playing the objective, and you don't have those years and years of midship slash truth experience in the hands of someone like Nated. But you know what, though? So this is a must win for Allegiance in my books right now. Allegiance has to win and, and, this unless they're going to lose the Series 4-2. And I was going to say, I was going to say, my concern here is that Allegiance, you know, they... They can slay, right? We, we've seen them slay. We've seen L-Town go in, right? Especially yep. in that regret matchup. But I feel like Denial has more well-rounded slayers on the squad. Yeah, and I think more slaying power for sure. That concerns me. And especially if you're an Allegiance fan, that should concern you too. Because that means that, you know, anyone can be a factor here for Denial. On the other side, you need L-Town to go off. You need Nated to get hype. And of course, the Spectre and Kratos, they just have to continue to support the roles and, and do what they can. On the other side for Denial, I mean, I, I think about how all four of these players have played at any given time, they're all going off. So I, I don't know. I mean, not to take anything away from Allegiance, but this matchup is too close to call. And the scores and the series have accounted for it as we're tied two to two, folks. It's time for Coliseum Slayer. Let's get into this one as we are going to kick it off with Nated. Yes, I want to jump on Nated because, as I stated before this, I think this game is a must win for Allegiance if they want to have their uh, their tournament life at stake. At this point, I do truly believe that Denial are heavily favored in the series looking at that game six. So. I don't know. We're, I want to go to a listen with Allegiance and hear how they're communicating because we heard how hyped they were earlier in the match. We heard some downs from time to time. We got to hear if they can keep this energy up the rest of the series. Going to an Astro listening with Team Allegiance. He's a back step. He's a back step. Hey, do you have Sniper? Got one over here. Got one over here. Sniper ramp. Got one. Nice. Got one. Glass. Glass. All dead. All dead. All dead. Still 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 all dead. Blue rocket, blue rocket. Blue rocket, 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 blue blue rocket, 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 blue Hot rockets. Oh my god! Nice. I need, I need help on these rockets. I'm rocket street, I'm rocket street! Three, three, three. I'm rocket street! It's scattered on my axe! It's scattered on my axe on red rock ram! It's coming up! It's coming up, red rock ram! Help me, help me! I need a red flag! I need a red flag! Top cat, top cat. Here, here, here. Kill scatter flag. Kill scatter flag. He's weak. Nice, nice, nice. I'm gonna get the huge, huge, huge. Watch top cat, watch top cat. I swear this one. Watch right by me, watch right by me. Looking, looking, looking. Rock's coming up, Rock's coming up. I killed one, I killed one. Elevate him, elevate him. Watch out, blue shoot, rocket shoot. Watch out, blue. Blue up, blue up, blue up, blue up. Watch out, sniper ramp, guys. Watch sniper ramp, guys. We left side, we left side. Here, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go side. Rocket. Watch out, blue, watch out, blue shit. Another one. Nice. Watch out, blue rock corner, good shit. The rock corner, watch out. Push it, Aiden, front side with him. We can't, we can't, we can't, we can't. I got one, I got one. Hold on me. There's something. I saw him. Weak, 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 we have rockets. All right, there was the Astro listening with Allegiance. While she thought so far, what did you hear and what were some of your concerns in that listening? Well, one thing we've always been critical is we keep talking about this Allegiance squad and Native squad getting hyped and being uh, a very high correlation to their success. But part of that reason is because when oh. you get double kills and triple kills like that, you get excited. Of course, you're going to think when you're hyped up that that means you're going to play better. But like I said before, when we saw in the very first game, 
you can't just be yelling out loud call outs when you're dead. It's not going to do anything for team dynamics. So we saw how calm they were until they started to get some sort of lead, and then they got pumped. Like, Two down, three down. Where are we pushing? All dead. Yeah. And uh, great job by Allegiance there during that listen. But like I said, it's maybe sometimes unfair of us to just kind of put all that pressure and just say, Nate just needs to get hyped. That's the only reason they're oh, playing well. Sure. Like, like I said, you can't just call out you know, every single thing when you're dead and expect that to translate to just pure success. Yeah, and, and it's a uh, it's something that, you know, a lot of people don't take into consideration. But also, I do want to put, uh, you know, the spotlight on Denial and most importantly, Contra here. You know, they've, they've been doing such a great job still keeping this one close. It looked like it was going to escape them for a brief moment. But you know what? Denial, they just know how to stay in the game. It's very impressive. Uh, keep in mind, though, that this one is far from over as we're not even at the halfway point. Barely there, though. Eight minutes, 26 seconds left on the clock, and Contra's waiting for that push on the red elbow. He thinks, you know what? They're going to get aggressive on me, bottom maze and elbow. I just need something because my teammates are stacked up all the way on Blue Cave. Walshy, how do you feel about him being the lone gunman out here on the elbow? He's or still on the creating cave? distance between himself and red flag, so it's not like he's in too vulnerable of a location. Like, he was able to rotate right there to snipe exactly. him once he realized he was getting pressed on. So able to rotate away, so he's always just one step ahead of his Legion squad. So Contra, who formerly used to go into the game attack, Lil Talent, he's doing an incredible job holding uh, this sniper. But one thing I want to say is that uh, even though Allegiance had the lead before, this does not look good for Allegiance Ooh. fans at the moment. Beautiful because shot. even when Allegiance had control, had the weapons, they only were able to mount a few kill lead. And now look at what Contra and the Denial Squad have done. They've got a seven kill lead here on Coliseum Team Slayer. Smartly enough, too, just throwing that sniper rifle off of the cliff and realizing I do not want to give this to my opponent because they have rockets. We cannot sacrifice letting them have a second power weapon as well. Contra having to back away. Pressure is going to be coming from the snipe side. Actually, one's going to be right above him. It's going to be Suspector, and Suspector just goes way out there for the kill. Able to get it right back in because he boosts the safety. And 29-25 here, a four-kill game separating Denial and Allegiance. Yeah, and I want to jump on with Nated, who has the only power weapon on the map at the moment because we saw Contra toss that sniper rifle off very wisely, might I add. But yes, we're going to see if Nate can actually make full use of these rockets because we've seen many times before where it seems like the Legion Squad, they'll have a power weapon and you hear them die over across the map. Here was an example of great effective use of rockets, not losing them. It, there's a big difference between, you know, getting double kill and giving the opposing team two rockets and getting double kill and using up the rest of the rockets. Also want to point out here, Nate's stats, he has 21.4% of the kills for his team. Of course, a big thank you to none other than HCS stats on Twitter. Make sure you guys check them out at HCS stats. You know what these guys do. I mean, you know, not only HCS stats, but you know, Halo Data Hive and all the other guys who've been keeping track of all the scrims, all the results, everything. But of course, a big thank you in this particular case, to HCS stats and Chad, who's in the crowd doing his best, keeping track of everything. Folks, 29-34 here as this Coliseum Slayer game is starting to slow down. Sniper Rifle is going to be the point of interest for everyone here. And Aiden is going to get stuck right on his belly. Not much you can do with that. Not the only point of interest, though, because keep in mind, oh, it I is forget. the six-minute mark. Both power weapons coming up at this time. Uh, we keep talking about, obviously, these teams rotating through and getting different power weapons. But, like we said, Sniper comes up every three minutes. Rocket comes up every two minutes. That means at the six-minute mark, both weapons are coming up, and we have to see who's able to walk away with what. And it looks like the Denial Squad got the better of that they exchange. Got the I'm trying to, trying to get a view on the Sniper. And not only does Boo Boo Doo Boo have the Sniper, he also has Scattershot and was taken down by a Slitter Grenade, updated. Oh, that's unfortunate for him. But Contra, immediately there, Suspector was going to challenge him. Contra knows that he pretty much is in a bad position, a rock in a hard place, if you will. Uh, there is going to be someone charging in. Contra, can he stay alive? No, he cannot. Kratos with the Rockets as well. This is going to be a two-kill game in favor of Denial. They're looking around, trying to go on the hunt, and with those Rockets could very well be a huge victory for them as they try and rally back the cause and get into this game. Now I want to point out, look at where Nated is with the Sniper. In a great location over at Rocket Corner. When we were looking at some gameplays earlier of some top pros, someone like Mikwin. Mikwin opted to push Tied over game. top Rocket multiple times. Yeah, look at Nated. He just sits over here on Rocket Corner, has angles towards Fountain, has angles towards Bridge, and if he does get pushed from Scattershot or Top Rocket, can easily thrust her over towards Red Flag. And look at that, just easy pickings across the Snipe Bridge. He's just doing exactly what you want a player to do with the sniper rifle in this case. Hold down a position, get the kills, and do 
the work. They're now up by two after trailing this matchup here. Denial lost control of it, and you said it. You said if Allegiance want to win this series, you know, or want to have a chance because you don't feel very confident about them in that Fathom CTF game, this is the game that was critical for them to win, and they're eight kills away from putting that three next to the top of the screen there. Yeah, and we know at the same time, I'm wrong more than any other caster, I'm sure, when I make some predictions like that, like they're for sure going to lose Fathom CTF, and who knows, because obviously, Legion's a great Fathom CTF team, but based on uh, what I've seen so far this match, I still believe this is a must win for Allegiance because I think Denial is going to take the second game. Yeah, Nade just being able to get out of there. Oh, Nade flying in. Boobadoobo and Hook are going to find it, but Suspector picks up the Rockets again. We're at a one kill game, people. The challenge coming up top, and the Rockets are going to fall. 46 46, folks. We're getting down to the wire here. L Town finds one in front. That's going to be Hook, the young player looking to make a name for himself here. But L Town trying to do the same thing as he said it like yesterday in the interview. I want to get Nade his first championship victory. But they're going to be three kills away from getting a third round win. And one step closer to going to the final. What a chaotic exchange there by Scattershot slash Red Rocket side. I thought Allegiance was in the driver's seat of this match with both the power weapons, but like you said, 49, those 48. Up, who can boo boo? Doo boo closing in. We're going to see who can get less kill. 49. Low. And that's going to do it. Denial will take it. Naded was exposed down low, but there wasn't much he could do. Denial are going to go up in the series three to two, one step closer to the final. What a match. That ending was just devastating. I'm trying to look at the stats right there. Is that Nated, Nated, Nated went off that game. Kills? Nated went off that game. And, you know, now this is do or die time. 21 kills for Nated, 13 deaths. Definitely putting in the work there. That sniper rifle at the end, I mean, you know, single-handedly brought the team right back into it. Uh, one thing I, I was wondering about was... I just was, noticed Nated had so many power weapon kills. And, exactly. And he was a power player. He got the medal. <laughs> yes, he's a power player. But I also noticed um, you'd, you'd assume that the Salesian squad, known as this teamwork squad, however, they only had 24 assists compared to the 34 assists of the Denial team. So one has to wonder how Legions is feeling as we get ready for this one. Showing the stats one more time. Accuracy percentage there. And 11 power weapon kills for Nated Walsh. That's actually a really good point. And that probably tells the story of why there were 10 or so fewer assists. But at the same time, I mean, you gotta you gotta wonder if Legion wasn't working together very well, or I think the I think the downfall, if you had to pinpoint it on one play that game, was the very end where somehow Nated and Suspector got collapsed in on red base or red rocket side. They just needed to give Nated some space, just let him pick off people across the map. And yeah. instead, somehow the members of Denial, such as Boo Boo Doo Boo and Hook, were able to somehow swarm red base from Bridge or from Scattershot side. I did not see exactly which side they came in from, but they swarmed that power weapon, got control of it, and were able to close out the game. So one thing that is uh, going to be concerning for Allegiance going into Fathom is, you know, you, you had mentioned this before, and I'm going to echo it, but, you know, Fathom is very much a Halo 5 map, yeah, it's right? Pure Halo There's 5 so map. many elements to the game that are just added on this map, and we've seen what Denial can do with the mechanics. But I also just want to point out, too, how close these games have been, how evenly matched Denial and Allegiance are. You know, you can, you can push aside the Stronghold games, because, you know what, I mean, it's strongholds, like, you know, you can't get snowball -y victories. I get it, and, and of course, Rig, 137, it's bound to happen. Eden Strongholds was a battle through and through until Denial were able to get that trip cap. But all these other matches here have been very close. A 50 to 48, once again, a 50 to 48 in this Slayer game just shows that, you know what, these two squads, anything can happen. So while Fathom CTF is a Halo 5 map, I think Allegiance could take it and force this Game 7. It's possible, but even if you look at the Halo 5 game types, something like Strongholds, who did that favor? Both Strongholds games going heavily in favor of Denial, and Very we true. are now looking at a Halo 5 game type, capture the flag on Fathom. I should say Halo 5 map, more so highlighting the Fathom part. Yeah. So, waiting for this one to start up here, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you get involved on social media. Who do you want to win? Use the information at the bottom left of your screen. Get involved on Twitter. Let everyone know what's going on here. This is an incredible series that could very well go the distance. Denial and Allegiance. Denial Esports, a, a name that is uh, well known within Halo, actually winning UGC St. Louis when the squad was under the banner of Captain Mickwin 
Chig, you know, uh, so on and so forth. I think uh, I, I think Cloud is on that roster as well. I'm trying yep, to that sounds correct. Trying to remember exactly Cloud, everything. Ryan Noob, Ryan Noob, there you go, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, and, the and Chig, and that was the old Denial roster. But of course, as Halo has evolved, so has the roster. New Denial, game, new blood, new game, new faces, and. We are, and, and even Allegiance, too. I mean, Nated had a really rocky HCS, but for him to really come out strong with this roster from the very beginning just speaks volumes to the work that they have put into this. Now, it all comes down to this for Nated. An opportunity at glory. The shot to play for the final to win his first championship as a veteran, a decade-plus-long veteran in competitive Halo. Do they do it now, Walsh? Yeah, how crazy is this? One of these teams are going to be final. We're going to either have Nated, an 11-year veteran who's never won a tournament, and Hoop, a two-month player, possibly competing for his first Halo title. How crazy would that to be to see someone like Hook win his very first tournament two months into the game? That would be absurd. That would just be, I wouldn't even know what to expect. But in any case, so guys, here we go. Game number six and look at that just what get there a jump. what a jump that was awesome he goes right for the rail but he can't quite follow through with it but regardless people uh just you have to praise that man that that's the thing that you were talking about right hey, fathom the is very much mechanics. a halo 5 mat you can abuse the mechanics in this game and just come out on top it is awesome yes and what uh what suspect or sorry what Altown did in that situation was he actually used the little ramp from those uh, kind of front ramps. And if you go at the right angle and thrust, you end up getting kind of this extra boost. I used to see it back uh, when I played Breakout sometimes, where you could actually do it from bomb center all the way to top center. And you can actually do it a lot in Regret, too. I was mentioning this earlier in the show when Strongside was just showing me all these different routes. But Denial have managed to be able to hold that down. Now you have Suspector and the crew trying to get the return. Boo Boo Doobo, though, keeping the flag alive and moving it. But it is going to be on the blue side of the base, on blue street. I like this position by Nated. Look it, he has flag, but he's not afraid to help get the flag recovery. He's been enough Fathom stalemates to know you need to stop the flag before it gets to the opposing base, and that unfortunately did not happen. We are in a stalemate. We have Devin Air back at his base flag, and Nated with Railgun actually pushing up. I like this play. He actually handed the flag off to Altown, and Altown's actually being fairly aggressive with this. He's going closer towards Treehouse, realizing at any moment, if his squad needs that extra little bit of firepower, he's there to provide it. That's right, but he ends up falling. So now that means uh, Altown and the crew just need to keep alive and hold this flag. And I actually really like this spot because he gets an overview of uh, the flag itself so he can get an idea where they're going to be. He right now, though. Two members of Allegiance fell, and so Altown realizes, guess what? I need to back up to my spawning teammates. I could get overrun here at any moment. Despite his position, he's probably not going to be able to take out two members of Denial if they come at him. Listen, we know you have a, a magnum, right, when you're, when you're holding the flag, but a word of advice for any players out there looking to get into competitive Halo, try not to be a superhero. Rely on your team. Do what you can to back up into the base and let your teammates do a bulk of the slang, but help where you can is the most important thing. It's all about creating opportunities and doing as much damage as you can across the map. I'm, uh, I'm wondering what's going on through these squads' minds. Are they worried about offense mainly, defense first? What is going on through the squads' minds? So at some point, I would like to go to a listen with the Legions and hear how they handle this uh, with, you know, with it being a stalemate. I feel like. I have a feeling like this stalemate's gonna go on for a while, so at some point, you know, in a minute or two, we need to go to Allegiance listening because yeah, uh, these guys are just gonna, you know it's gonna be chaotic. It's gonna be a lot of back and forth. So one thing uh, that will happen here is you'll hear them say, we got one or two down, everyone push up, and that's what L-Town's doing at the moment. And there'll be other times where they have members down, and L-Town's gonna back up towards Flagside. So let's go to uh, Astro listening with Team Allegiance. Treehouse. Treehouse, They're sneaky. He's still there. I died, I died, I died. Nice, nice, nice. Another one on bridge, another one on bridge. Watch out, watch out, Pete. Repeat, watch out. I'm gonna watch out. I'm gonna watch out. Dead, dead, dead. Last guy, last guy. Hey, I'm getting flagged. We're just gonna get flagged. Last guy's pushing the garage. Pushing the garage. Pushing the garage. Pushing the garage. Yo, Brent's pushing. I'm pushing into Salo as well. We'll shut the garage. Watch out. I'm pushing our truth flag, alright? Pushing our truth flag. Watch out, they're Larry Watch out, they're Larry guys. Two guys are Larry both week. Two guys are Larry both week. Yeah, I'm running. Come back. Come in, come in. No, 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 repeat one shot, repeat one shot. Watch out, repeat guys. I killed him. Nice. Drop. Nice. One dead. Yeah, just no, we're going. There's one other cheat, there is one other cheat. Crash into the court. Fly guys up, fly guys up. Push it, fly guy. Yo, Camo's gonna be in 30 seconds. Round 51, round 51. Fly guys weak. Exactly. Alright, we'll go guys. I got flag. Yep. Watch out, our flag, two or flag, two or flag guys. They're gonna get re- Let's get the re- Let's get the re- They're gonna run it, they're gonna run our flag. 
They're gonna run our flag. I'm, I'm running it, running right. it. Sorry, right. sorry. Two shots are flying, guys. Two shots are flying. Two shots are elbow. Ten seconds of camo. Country, one shot flying. Country, one shot flying. Guys, I'm running it. One shot, one shot, one shot. Somebody run this. I have real guns. Somebody run this. Somebody run this. I hear you. I hear you. Do you want camo, Brett? Camo's up. Camo's up. Camo's up. Shut those heads up. Shut those heads up. I killed flag. I got SMG. I died. I'm on re. Someone run this. I'm running. I'm running. They're camo. They're camo. They're camo. One shot. Like I'm Nice. Right, I, 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 I can't pack, I can't pack. Push the trio, Aiden. Push the trio. Go to combat from there, Aiden. Push the trio, watch out, Tom. Watch out. No, I'm on time, okay? I can't help you, I'm counting now. Watch out, watch out the push, watch out the push. Guys, live, live, live. It's a real gun, it's a real gun. I hear you, I hear you, I'm just living. Coming up our tree, coming up the tree. Two of them on our tree, one's camo door. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here, I'm here. We have to clear our tree. We have to clear our tree. We're shooting our flight, our flight guard. Now you're alone. You're there, dude. I flagged her. It's a ring of treehouse. They're all treehouse. They're all treehouse. Ring of pit. The pit, red. Great listening there with the legions. Now the flag is starting to move here, and you have needed waiting for him, but he can't do anything. He's going to get shut down by what a, a railgun around the corner. He used it like a shotgun. The the cares that he gave were absolutely zero. Team Allegiance, so can't quite get the return. This is 100% going to be. Oh, he snuck in there, but they won't be enough. They are going to get the return. I thought by some miraculous thing he was going to make the stop. Not the case. Denial is going to tie it up one to one. Now that was a great cap by Denial, but can we talk about that crazy stalemate we? Had. Not only did both flag get returned, but we saw a double pull from both teams again. Both teams went on the offensive, got a flag recovery, and both teams again pulled the flag yeah. and ran across. Allegiance, uh, being the benefactor in that situation, end up getting that it's first like we capture. get it, guys. You want to be the blue team. The other team wants to be the red team. We understand that. You consistently want to live on the enemy side. <laughs> but you know what, though? That right there also just shows, again, to echo what we've been saying this entire series, Walshy, they're so evenly matched. They, they read each other like a book, and it has just been impressive so far. Yeah, so evenly matched, but also you can see how much more comfortable Denial is on this map compared to True CTF. You saw on True CTF, they were always on defense. They were scared to get pulls. They were pulling flags in the wrong locations. Whereas here on Fathom, looks like Denial knows when to pull the flags, knows where to position themselves, and they are a force to be reckoned with. Suspector is going to disintegrate Contra here as Kratos is looking around to see if he can find anyone. And he does get those hit markers down low. So that's going to tell him, give him some information. And that's why Nate is going to go right after that one. Devin will fall to Kratos' BR. Meanwhile, you have Camo. It's going to be picked up by Hook as he's looking to make some progress now and be a nuisance. He finds Kratos in front of him. That should be an easy one shot. Is able to get it, though. And uh, now looking to make some progress here. Walsh, I don't think he's going to stay alive with this Camo behind the wall. But I think you're wrong. I can't I believe it. I think you're wrong. No, yeah, that was absolute great backup from his teammate there. I believe that was Contra, a.k.a. Cody, a.k.a. Lil Talon. Not only helping Hook stay alive, but running that flag was eventually taken down. So we're going to see if Hook plays this. I would like to see him continue to slay. Some mistake that players make is just absolutely committing to objective 100%. I'm guilty of that in the past. And uh, Hook did not make the mistake. He decided to go for slays and help keep a bit more control on the map. Just could not stay alive because he was focused down by two members there. Uh, of course, Camo not really coming up clutch when you have to deal with so many players. Nated sliding around the corner, is able to find Devin. And that was a beautiful shot there. Booba Dooba now, knowing a player's going to come in for the challenge. L-Town's going to win that. Meanwhile, Hook, he's trying to defend around the base. You have Devin looking to be the lone gunman, the man trying to keep the drive alive here for his team. Try to go for the melee, but won't find much. Did hold it down long enough, though, to prevent them from making moves. Keep that in mind. That flag is getting pushed down mid, and it is exposed. But it seems like Allegiance will be able to make progress with it at the very least. One in front of him, finding him, and it's just non-stop carnage down low as Allegiance are looking to make progress. And look at this. Devinator doing a great job buying, uh, going towards That's top center as soon as bought time. But yes, looks like if you're an Allegiance fan, you should be real happy right now as they put in that second cap. 2-1 lead here on game number six for Allegiance. Contra, though, with a double kill. Uh, so keep that in mind. It's going to you know, leave that base open, and that exposure because of that will mean a spawn coming from Turbine for Allegiance and Denial focusing their attention in that area. And despite it all, Suspector and the crew able to fend the attack off. They get three down. Great railgun play. Flag's going to get returned. They just need to hold off this next attack. Yes, and as they're getting that flag return, Nated was running a flag across the map, was eventually taken down. But it looks like we're kind of even numbers at the moment. Three and three alive for each squad. Going to see who comes ahead in this even situation. Yeah, but if you're Allegiance, you're happy because you're in the lead. You're the one that is in the driver's seat. 
for denial. They have to make a response happen quickly. Three minutes and six seconds left on the clock. And uh, if Denial win this one, they will move on to the finals here at the North American Regional Qualifier. The first step to the Halo World Championship, you know, for a live event format, it'll be huge for them. But for Allegiance, it's about staying alive and forcing that game seven. Can they do it as the Spectre's trying to stay alive? Flag, I believe, is going to be rammed through the pit here. And Devin just moving in and focusing on him. They managed to get that flag clear across the enemy base. Nated now, he is going to be inside of the blue flag, finding Contra. Huge return here. Can he get the return as he will fall? But they got to get the flag as soon as they possibly can. Hoop, yep. he gets it, but he can't quite put it away just yet. He has teammates there for the pickup, luckily for him. Two to two in the count. This is going to go down to whoever caps it next. Hook took his time right there. He realized, guess what? There was still about a quarter of the return time on the flag, and as long as no player was in position to touch it back, the flag actually kind of has that uh, deterioration not too long. Like, it oh, it no. returns over the course of, honestly, like 15, 20 Mistakes seconds. Remain. The, yeah, stays there for days. Mistakes and so Hook, um, Hook definitely waited until he started to have shield, or at least he knew when the opportunity was right to grab it, and that's exactly what Hoop did. Booba Dooboo, killing his teammate. You know, it's all right. Move <laughs> it on. It happens from time to time. Move on. Things happen. Well, can uh, we talk about how we're at an even 2-2 two -two game here? Game six. Here's the thing, Walsh, and a new camel is going to come up and get burned right away at the 138 mark. That means that that camel for this particular game, for uh, you know, for regulation play, will be done. If it goes to overtime, of course, we will see another camo. Uh, I just want to ask you, Walshy, how do you feel about denial? You know, they're they're really playing smart. And besides a couple plays that you noticed about, you know, like on truth, for example, with tossing on the flag and you know, so on and so forth. You have to be impressed. These players are playing like veterans. 100% impressed. You can't expect them to play perfect Halo having played, you know, Halo for only a couple months competitively in a player like Hoop. However, they have came out to play. Like I said, none of us casters predicted Denial in our top eight. You asked me before this series if uh, I thought Denial was going to win the series. I would have said no. Allegiance are favored. However, after seeing how Denial are playing, how well they are making the right flag routes and decisions, they are just, they've They've constantly impressed me. They've constantly impressed me this entire tournament. It's it's just been amazing to see. Contra and Boobadoobu finding two members of Allegiance. We're down now to 38 seconds, and we've seen some major swings in the past happen at that 40-second mark. But Hoop, he knows he can't make any progress because he has no shields. He's going to have to rely on his teammates. But with two down, they got to slow things down. 26 seconds left on the clock as nades are going to start to fly in by BR. Two players, as a matter of fact, are going to be at level ground with him. Kratos going in for the challenge. Another one right behind him. But there's not much you could do there. If you get pressured by two members of Allegiance, chances are you are going to fall, and he will not make much progress. It seems like we could be going into OT here if, uh, you know, these two teams. Yeah, we're 100% going to be going into overtime now, folks. Next cap will win 100% for Allegiance. It's a chance to fight game seven for Denial going to the finals. Just constant back and forth action here. You see both these teams know how to play great offense and defense. Um, Beforehand, we used to see this Allegiant squad like more so focused on just pushing out their base, but it seems like this Denial team has done a great job of usually clearing these members out. As I say that, Nate is taking a pit. the flag, run it pit, has it so far across the map. I'm not sure if anyone's in position to stop it. Nate eventually taken down, but looks like his teammate L-Town has it all the way to the window. Not sure if he's taken Big it down yet. He's got it, and the Legions are forcing a game number seven in a grueling, grueling best of seven series. And I couldn't be more wrong. Tied I, three, three. I counted Legions out. I said, if Allegiance gets to game six, and they're down 3-2 in the series, Allegiance is over. However, Allegiance proving that, guess what? Even if you consider some of these now players, prominent players in Halo 5, we can adapt to any game. Nate's been on the scene for 10 or 11 years, and it's no surprise he's so successful. Unbelievable, people. When I sat down here to cast with you, Walshi, I did not think that we'd be sitting here this long. <laughs> it is, I mean, for one, uh, I do not feel my butt anymore because I've just been sitting on this chair for so long. It has a permanent groove. Anyone who sits here, I feel bad for you. It's rather warm. Um, but because of that, though, we're going to game seven. We're going to game seven. Incredible. Yes. Incredible, Walsh. Not what uh, I expected, especially having seen that Coliseum Team Slayer game going in favor of denial. I, uh, I, I'm happy to be proved wrong a lot of times because that means I can see more great Halo. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I think uh, we all want to see matches go the distance. And in this particular case, uh, you know, we couldn't be happier. Not only are we 
and, and I also just want to say, right, we saw Game 7 at X Games, and I think for a lot of people, uh, you know, that could have been their, their introduction to competitive Halo. And right here, what you're seeing is the next generation, right? You're seeing the next generation. These are the guys that we're going to be talking about for a couple years to come. So get used to it. They are so good, so talented, so evenly matched. I cannot begin to praise Allegiance and Denial enough. I mean, honestly, if you guys are in the crowd, this is an incredible series. Let's get a round of applause. Round of applause going, because this is top quality Halo. Top quality Halo. That's why I love this game. We're going to game seven, folks. Slayer on Plaza. Walshy, thoughts? Now we're going to see what happens off the break here. Who's going to get that first overshield? When we saw last game, you know, something like on a Eden Strongholds, we saw, obviously, L-Town gain that first OS, but not making much use of it. OS on this map, however, is going to be quite different as you don't have the rockets to fully counter you. I feel like whomever gets control of that first OS is most likely going to get control at that first sniper rifle and control of the map. Yeah, it's also, it, it comes down to those spawns too. Um, you know, who gets red, who gets blue. Look at those scores between the Slayer games and the CTF games. Both 50 48 Slayers, both 3 2 CTF games. It's Can't insane. get much closer than that. It's insane. And we went into overtime for that Fathom CTF game. So. You know, it just doesn't get any better than this. But the pressure's on for Nated and the crew, for Kratos and uh, and everyone else in Allegiance, right? You know, this is a huge opportunity. Talking to L-Town last night, to echo it again, he said, I want uh, I want to get Nated his first tournament win. Uh, you know, how sweet would that be for him? Uh, keep in mind, though, right after this, we have an X Games gold medal rematch between Evil Geniuses and Counter Logic Gaming. So... The intensity, the craziness does not stop yet because then after that, we have the finals. And as I said before, for the first time in a very long time, we're not going to have an EG CLG final. We're guaranteed to see something different and unique. And Halo has consistently proven us wrong. Anything can happen, especially here at the MLG Arena. Uh, now we're uh, going to get this one going. I mean, honestly, Walshy, I just don't know what to expect. I mean, anyone can take I don't even want to make happy. a prediction here. I've been wrong every time so far. When I I've, just hope for a good game. Yes. <laughs> That's all I care about, a good game. And, of I'm course, cool we're going to be proven wrong with theirs because it's going to be a landslide here. Oh, come on, Dave. <laughs> Seriously. Jeez. <laughs> Terrible. All right, guys. It's time. Game number seven. I want you guys in the crowd to get loud. Get loud. Game seven. Allegiance. Denial. It goes down right now, and we're kicking it off with L-Town. Let's see what he can do is he's going to make a beeline straight for the OS. Nade's coming in, and he gets burned right away at the 11.53 mark. OS will do nothing for Allegiance here. Got to wonder what uh, L-Town's plan was there. You know he's had Maybe just multiple burn times it. playing this game, but at the same time, you gotta you can't be content with a burn all the time. Sometimes you got to be very happy that, or you got to plan on getting that overshield. You can't just give it that first kill and control the map. And we hear some people getting hyped as L-Town Eventually gets a great spawn, gets a double kill, and now Sniper in the hands of Kratos. Kratos looking to take some faces off here as they're up by four. Of course, Denial in a pressure-filled situation. Looking uh, to go for a first title for many of the, for every player here, a first out, everyone here, as a matter of fact, would be contending in their first final, if, if, I, if I'm uh, correct. I mean, I, I could be slightly wrong. I know Nated, um, Nated is the Halo only exception history, to the yeah, rule. Nated, yeah, Nated's been in the final before, but we're talking past titles. So, yes, you are absolutely correct. Nate is the only one who has been to the finals before, whether it be, you know, uh, Halo 4 or so on and so forth. You know, he has been there. Uh, Kratos, though, looking to get a block on the uh, cafe side and try and rotate, which is smart. But now, oh my goodness, Kratos with the shot on Hook. Almost followed it up with another one, but he couldn't find it just yet, though. He's still going to continue to hold this down. And there you have it, folks. $2.99 worth of goodies for your troubles of watching this broadcast. Big thank you to everyone who's watching. 6-3 is the score. If you're just joining us, this is game number seven between Allegiance and Denial. Winner goes on to the finals and await the victor of CLG versus EG coming up next. Just when I thought this game was slowing down completely, Denial makes a great push across the map, takes over Snipe's side, and forces Kratos to rotate over to Yard with Sniper. This is not the spot you want to be with Snipe, but uh, Overshield coming up in about 10 seconds. We're going to see what Denial can do to either acquire this 
or Allegiance to do to stop it. I feel like Kratos and Kuro on a good, you know, good part of the map to, to be able to get this. Um, because right there, right, he has that overlook of the uh, OS, but he doesn't get it. As a matter of fact, Hook is going to grab it, and just like that, you're going to see that overshield. Kratos is pinned back here, but what do you do, Walshy? Do you try and get aggressive back here on Yard? It seems like that's what Devin wants to do, but he's the only one here. Um, you don't exactly want to fully push on Yard. Like, someone like Devin, he needs to maybe get up on the top yellow and overlook Yard. You need to poke at it, because basically it's really tough to fully coordinate a push on Yard and hit it from multiple angles at the exact same time. It has to be executed perfectly. And that's why we did not see Denal try to push in on Yard. I also want to make note of that push too, right? You saw Hook beginning to push in with the overshield over at that uh, over at Yard, right? That had to force that rotation over to Tram. But when they rotated over, you saw a player of Denial waiting on the bridge and just pinning them down with VR shots and another player by the light rifle too. Because of that, that gave Denial the opportunity to get this lead, and they just claimed a new sniper. And guess who has this sniper? It's in the hands of Hook, the man who sent, or should I say the boy who sent Liquid home yesterday. We are going to see what kind of work he can do here, and just always hitting shots. And as we've seen before, too, he doesn't even need a scope if he doesn't want to use it. Yeah, but he's going to be in a world of hurt here in just a little bit as he needs his teammate to back him up. Devin's able to get the kill there. One player actually ch challenging on the outside. Hook is in a bad spot, but he's able to get that one player shot down and, and no shields, which gives him an opportunity to get away from here, but not enough just yet. He was taking a couple shots from behind, and that's where Contra was going to come in clutch to be able to block that you know, approach on the snipe ramp. Now they're thinking about how they want to be able to fight this one. Suspector going in for the challenge. Hook, he needs to survive, and he does so. A big kill for the young one. That is a huge kill because not only does that get control of the sniper area, he keeps control of the sniper rifle, and overshield is coming up in about 10 seconds. We're going to have to see if Hook and Squad can get their second overshield in a row. Just an FYI, for those of you on matchmaking that like to play by glass, I hate you. Just just so you <laughs> are aware of this of, of what I'm talking about. But Hook somehow able to get a shot off there with the, with the Magnum, but the new overshield has been picked up, and they are going to get aggressed on here in just a little bit. It's going to be L-Town, and he's just going to be burning those shots with the sniper. But somehow L-Town shields get trained, and he will not fall just yet. But regardless, the Spectre with a double kill, and they are going to get Sniper, but Hook left it, the, the chamber, very empty, as he only has two shots to work with. Yeah, you have room for air when you have Overshield, but you don't want to give opportunities like that to someone like Hook because he could just go off at any moment, hit a couple no-scopes, and delete that Overshield. Outtown luckily uh, avoided a few of those shots, but could have possibly cleaned up Huke a little bit oh, And it, it could have been bad, too. Like, that would have been really bad. But uh, Outtown able to oh stay my. up here. And that was a brilliant kill. Finding another one. Great prediction, Nate. Devin, though, having to back away here. Wisely enough, not engaging in this battle. But he's taking shots from a couple different directions. Booba Dubu is going to be exposed by himself on the snipe side. There is going to be uh, Brett fighting one person that's naded up top. And that will be naded with a kill on Contra. Another rack pack for your troubles, people. Yes, Nade doing an incredible job staying alive. But also, we got to highlight that play by L-Town. Doing so much damage, two players backing them down, coming back out to the center of the map, helping over at Blue Truck, and the entire sequence staying alive. Wow, what a game we're seeing so far. Denial up by three, getting ready for those nades. And that was a uh, confirmed hit marker on an enemy there, so that's going to have to force that player to back away to Spectre down low uh, by U turn. And you have uh, another player, Hook, falling down uh, by Cafe. So Devin's not in a great spot here. He's really just looking to find the kill any way he can, just support his teammates as best he possibly could. Contra should be able to get that kill, which he does on Suspector. Now anticipating those nades coming in. He will eat a couple of them, though, as he's trying to stay alive around this pillar. Can he do it? No. Not to be the case, but who got the sniper right back in his possession. They're still up by three. Denial looking to take this one as we're at five minutes and 46 seconds left in this game. Over and overshield's up. Yep, overshield's up. We're going to see if we can get it. It looks like Burn. Devin at least burned it, but that's not what you want to do when you have a setup like that. Hook losing sniper. Contra going down. Devin here, three members. We're going to stick with Hook through the respawn and see what he does to try to get back control of the snipe side because that was a dire mistake losing control of that weapon. That was a great spot there to spawn to as well, right? To have that, uh, you know, blue ramp or the uh, cafe side VR to spawn at, that is just uh, incredible. But he is going to get pressured here. Hook trying to stay alive. 34-34 is the count here. This game could not be any more neck and neck. This series couldn't be more close. I'm just absolutely blown away here. 
3-3 in this series count guys if you're just joining us it has been a long long series but here comes the specter looking to cause some trouble finds one but each time they get a kill there's denial to answer right back each and every time finding one but again 36 36 here folks I just, I, I cannot even, it's so down the middle, it's so hard to call. I have never seen the, the sniper get picked up again after Hook lost it. It seemed like there was such a scramble for control that both teams lost track of it and neither team backing down at this moment. You remember seeing how slow paced it was early on in the game. These teams are just going back and forth right now though. Even though no weapons come at the moment, we don't see overshield for another 30 seconds. We don't see sniper for another minute and 22 seconds. Yeah, and that sniper could be a difference maker, but I think Overshield's going to be the play, so they have to be very careful about that. Pressure coming around from Cafe side here. Denial's going to go up by two, finding one below. And does he get the trade? No, L-Town is going to pick up the double kill. Hook now around the side right by Garbage Truck, but Suspector does not see the death from above as Nated off the spawn is just looking to move into the Cafe, or at the very least get an angle to be able to support his teammates. Denial currently up by two. Can they do it is a question. Can the young players make their way to their first grand final or will the veteran Nated and his squad of fresh faces fight their way to a final victory and potentially Nated's first win? Everything is on the line here. 10 kills for Denial. Either way, we are getting a great story here from both these Overshield's squads. Nated's going for this Overshield taken down. Denial I gets it. Hook, Hook the hero grabbing Overshield, helping the five kill lead. And guess what? 30 seconds from now, new sniper. Oh man, and that's Overshield could be game changing, people. Nated losing out, the veteran losing out to the young player. What a story that is. One but thing I want to point out is the uh, Overshield depreciation. You notice how Hook's Overshield is slowly going down. So if he just sits back this entire time, it will uh, end up disappearing. However, looks like Hook got a little impatient, pushed in toward Jard against two members, and lost that full Overshield. Maybe he was using it as a distraction to get the sniper in the hands of Contra, formerly known as Lil Talent. But you know what, though? I like where Hook's position is, because, or at least where he was. He was just waiting. He was waiting for them. They know that they're pinned down. There's not many uh, you know, rooms for, for opportunity here. They, I think one player is going to be trapped inside. Uh, no, so they are going to have two players stacked up on the yard side of the map. But the question is, do they expose themselves? And there it is. A suspector will not have a face anymore as Contra will net the 46th kill. What do you have here, Walsh? We have all four members of Allegiance stuck in yard. The furthest person out is this player on glass, Altown. But I will show you back on Contra's POV. He's letting them know if anyone pokes over towards this flower side, their face is going to get ripped off again. I also want to make note, yeah, Booba Dooba looking over at Light Rifle. Okay. You have uh, Dev looking at Sniper. And of course, Hook waiting for someone to come up yellow sneaky. So they could pin them off if they wanted to. Here's the Allegiant strategy right now. They are buying a little bit of time, and they're going to make a push when they get a kill or set up around this next overshield, which should be coming up in about 10 seconds. Two players are down here, and Denial having to back away, taking his time. Contra knows that the pressure's coming. Does he come out on top with a snipe here? A snapshot could save him, and he's trying to stay up. But 46 41, and Denial have given up that position, but Hook finds the 47. Three kills remaining, and Denial will be going on to the final for Allegiance, the number one seeded team. They're trying. They're playing off of the back foot here, down by four, as Nated just picked up Booba Dubu with a BR headshot. Kratos got overshield. Suspector has sniper. Allegiance needs to slow this down. Do not give any deaths. Let your sniper and overshield player get these kills and start the engagements. What does Kratos do with the overshield, though, Walsh? He, what, what is he trying to accomplish It's a negligible here? amount right now. He only has about a quarter overshield, so he just needs to just back down. Treat it as if you almost have no overshield. So if you someone just, comes around the corner, it's like, all right, you get a, you know, you get a free shot into and you can still win that one-on-one. -on -one. But it's not enough an overshield to press an advantage into a close, into a close-range battle like Yard. Keep in mind, game in the hands of Suspector. Players pinned in yellow, loaded up to the T with SMGs and battle rifles waiting, waiting for them to challenge them on yard. They know they have to make a play, and if they get four down here, this could very well be it, but never mind. Contra's gonna push up with the SMG. One more kill remaining. Boo Boo Boo, or excuse me, Devin's gonna be down low, and that's gonna do it. Denial is moving on to the final. Unbelievable. Wow. And I, look I can't at that believe allegiance it. They had Sniper. It just seems like they pushed in. They should have known there's someone hiding around the corner of tram or wherever it happened to be. It just seemed like they started collapsing on yard, and I don't see the full play there. You you could maybe try to get someone over on top yellow and try to get sniped there. You just have to get a random pick. You can't expect to just flood yard without taking 
massive amounts of depth when you go into the close range weapons like SMG and AR. Wow. What a game. What a series. What a series to call for sure as both teams now for, for Allegiance, they have their sights set on a $2.5 million prize pool at the Halo World Championships. But for Denao, on this day, they are now going to play in the finals. Who would have thought that this was the reality? Hook has been playing competitive Halo for two months, drops a plus eight going 16 and eight this last game, and is now going to be in the finals, guaranteed top two at the North American Regional event here in Columbus, Ohio. Absurd. Absurd game, but you know what though for Allegiance, they put up a fight and it just went back and forth. One thing's for certain, the strongholds game for Denial, very strong. You uh, you know, no pun intended. You need to be very worried about Denial going into strongholds. But how close those games were. You have two teams on the other side in the semifinal waiting for them. Evil Geniuses and CLG and we saw what EG was able to do against Denial in group play. Walshy, can Denial go all the way against CLG and EG? I can't doubt them anymore. Yes, they can. They have the ability to. I don't think they're favored by any means. I mean, you're looking at either Evil Geniuses or Counter Logic Gaming, two absolute powerhouses in the Halo scene and other esports scenes without a doubt. But at the end of the day, Denial has proven every doubter out there wrong. Even us casters proved us absolutely wrong in saying, guess what? We are one of the best teams here in North America and the entire world. The team that no caster had coming out of pool play is now playing in the finals of the North American Regional Qualifier. Man, we've, we've said all we could say at this point, but I think we have to hear it from our analysis, and uh, you know, our analysts, excuse me, and see what they have to think or what they have to say. I'm sorry, I'm absolutely flabbergasted. What an incredible <laughs> series from that game. Guys, take it away. I let me unmute myself here, guys. We were screaming down here towards the end of that <laughs> game. Fellas, before we bring it back to the start of the series, let's just wrap up that epic game seven. And before we do that, I have to ask you, was this series better than what we saw between CLG and EG at the X Games? Uh, for me, I believe so, because Denial is just this new young gun squad. Nobody saw these guys coming out into the top eight. None of us predicted them here. So this is honestly probably one of the best matches of Halo 5 I've seen yet. Yeah, and you couldn't ask for a better upset, if you will. Denial coming in and really just proving that they were the true dark horse, making it all the way to the finals. No one even had them in the top eight from the cast of predictions. And then they just catapult themselves past the number one seed, Allegiance, in a game seven that's as tight-knit as that. They had the composure that you would think veterans would add. And uh, yeah, amazing. Absolutely incredible stuff. And it started all with game number one. Strong side, there was one turning point here, and it was kind of a difference of strategies being yeah. employed. Walk me through this first highlight. What did we see coming into play from Denial? So we, see, we saw Denial, and right here we're with Pred, just holding down the outside, uh, outside carbine area. Just Allegiance could not break this out. You see them try and set up a flank right here. Pred barely sneaks by right there, killing Nated. And just Allegiance not breaking this setup for almost half of the game. Uh, they, they, st they uh, excuse me, they stuck them to, to 29 points. And it seems that Denial has strongholds down for sure. Allegiance definitely knows that this is a game type now that they're going to have to to work on in the future but denial just they locked this down and they could not let allegiance through the entire game which was incredible they just locked down the outside they didn't allow the flanks they yep. played it perfectly as soon as they got control in game two though the chaos started brewing a 50 48 finish in the team oh, yeah. slayer which way did you think this was going did you think denial was going to be able to steal it at the end I mean, I, I, it looked like there was a chance, right? But L-Town was just on point the entire game. I, I think the guy dropped 21 kills or something of the sort. And so for someone like that to step up again, time and time again this weekend, uh, I don't think that Allegiance is expected to rely on L-Town to slay, ever. So when you have someone that's going to step up like that, uh, you're going to win. Just fair and square. And here's a look at the final seconds of that game, too, guys. If you're just joining us, you heard about all the hype on Twitter coming into this Game 7. It was an insane series from the get-go. You see here, 46-47 final moments on board with Devin, and this is where we thought 
Maybe Denial is going to be able to mount the comeback. Allegiance leading most of this game. Devin and friends staying alive up top. Boo Boo with a big kill, but then it's Kratos answering back. Suspector with a big kill on Contra top middle. And then Devin is just going to get pinched. And the game was all over as Devin couldn't help his teammates survive that last one. Great finish, though, from Allegiance. Yep. They didn't give up. And, and that kind of continued going into game three. Strong side, what was kind of the, the big game that you want to talk about, though, in this best of seven series? Uh, the biggest game? I mean, honestly, <laughs> honestly, uh, let's go to the Collie, Collie Slayer. Every game was so close. So I'm looking at my paper right here, all my all my notes. All the Slayers were within, within like six kills. And they were all down to the last minutes. The CTF games were down to the last few seconds as yep. well. Fathom CTF went to OT. Then we were at Truth CTF. It almost went to OT. I think Allegiance capped right at the end with 20 seconds left. These two teams paired up so well together and it was just back and forth watching it. It was even hard for me to take notes because I was, I was just so shocked and how exactly. back and forth the game was going. The only games where we saw that teams were able to get a, a setup was Denial with their Strongholds right. uh, yep. games. We, we watched them play on They're Eden's strong, Strongholds and they strong. won 100 to 53. We saw them use the three cap setup. They, they held that down for a good portion of the game right. and Allegiance couldn't get a so single Stronghold. Too. They were just flushing them out, just collapsing from Stronghold to Stronghold. Yep. Allegiance Staggering would spawn at Tower, then they would spawn outside. Yep. They just, they couldn't do anything. Here's a look at the last 30 seconds of game four. Production crew queuing up some replays for you guys. Here was the swing game, uh, Denial. Trying to answer back after Allegiance won that game to Slayer. And, and you see at the end here, who kind of started all when he got the overshield? It was about 53 to, I think, 48 denial trailing. And from that point on, they never slowed down. The three caps coming into play. And strong side, you were talking to the guys at Liquid when you went over and watched these guys before the tournament. They said, this is a new strategy that some of the teams might be trying to start employing at this tournament for the first time. Yeah, we've heard them talk about it. No team has really been able to, to hold that strategy throughout yep. an entire game. Uh, so we're, we just saw that come out first time, not so the long, first so. time, but being able to hold it for that long exactly. for the first time ever in a tournament. Huge deal. And that, for that to be denial of all the teams, like, I mean, it's, it's absolutely incredible how, how these guys have come together. I mean, this is a Cinderella story. I mean, these guys are just phenomenal. A fantastic series from top to bottom, guys. If you missed any of the action, don't worry. We'll put up the VODs for you later to check out. But we are in store for some more incredible Halo. EG and CLG, they were watching all of the matches. Oh, yeah. Standing with us here at the analyst desk. Atali said, man, I wish this didn't series happen. We have a whole lot of expectations to live up to. No way we can match the hype of that series. But we're hoping to Crazy. see an epic best of seven. Before we get to that, though, we got an awesome interview ready down on the floor in just a moment. We're going to be talking with Elam alumni, excuse yep. me, uh, who is the coach of this denial yep. squad. Before we talk to him, guys, give me some background on alumni. How long have you seen him in the Halo scene? He's been around forever. And not only him, but his, his little brother, if you will, Hoaxer, has been around as well. These guys have, have, have just been grinding away at Halo, I think, even since the Halo 2, Halo 3 days. Um, so alumni has been around a very long time, and he's teamed with so many different players, even coached so many different players. So it's he's not just your average veteran. He's a guy that's seen every type of player, and he knows how to work with all those guys. He's not just, oh, the dude has been on one team in his entire life and, and doesn't know how to coach a, a, a new group of guys. The guy is very, very smart, very smart. All right, well, we have the fifth man ready on the floor. Let's send it down to him right now. Thanks, Bucket. Down here on the floor, as you said, with alumni coach of uh, Team Denial. I have to ask you straight away, what was the emotion? What was going through your guys' mind on that last map? It was such a close one. Um, honestly, we were just confident the entire series and just leading on to that game type. We just wanted to just switch out and work together and run as pairs and stuff like that and not give up too many free kills. And everybody was pretty calm during the game and trusted in each other and that's how we got that win. In terms of the series as a whole, everything was so, so close apart from one game type, which we kind of noticed you guys really starting to excel in. And that, of course, Strongholds. You guys uh, played that one a little bit differently than a lot of other teams here at the North American Qualifier. Obviously, you don't want to dive too deep into some of your team strats, but is that something that you guys have been practicing a lot, maybe playing a little bit different than a lot of the other North American teams? Yeah, um, honestly, Strongholds has been our worst um, game types, yeah, of the objective ones. Flag, obviously, being our strongest, you know, we just, that Eden, we just kept them on a spawn cycle and decided to just push all the Strongholds, you know, to keep them, and they literally could not have four alive at the same time, so they honestly weren't expecting that. One of the questions a lot of people have come to me kind of asking about this denial squad is, 
What made you kind of decide to coach this squad? Because we saw you playing a lot in the online qualifiers, but is there any kind of fun story behind why you want to coach this team? Honestly, uh, I was actually trying to get on the team with Devin and Contra uh, before Hugh and uh, Boo Boo decided to join that, that roster. I saw a lot of potential in both, uh, actually all those players, and you know, I decided to uh, you know, work with them, and you know, that's when the whole coaching decided to come into play. And in, in terms of the grand final, is there a specific team you would rather meet, either CLG or EG, maybe a point to prove, anything along those lines? I want that EG rematch, to be honest with you, because I felt like we should have won that, and, you know, uh, we match up really well with them. Okay, well, best of luck to you and the boys in the grand final. I also want to shout out Denali Sports, all the sponsors, Sector 6, DX Racer, HyperX, and uh, Scuff. So, thank you. Shout out to all the good guys behind Denali Esports. For now, though, quick commercial break. When we return, Evil Geniuses versus Counter Logic Gaming.